Greetings and salutations, everyone! Welcome to another Archcast special with Raging Golden Eagle! Welcome, my dude. Why would anyone have that asshole on? Well, who knows? Well, haven't you heard? It's Gamergate 2.0 now. We've, we've reset all of the relationships and everything, so we're back to scratch now. Yeah, well, I know. I, I didn't watch most of the stream you did last week, unfortunately, but I did see you had Sargon on. It's just kind of funny you missed him. Because he, he That was one of his uh, goals, right? Gamergate 2.0. Yep. And uh, hey, it's, it's here. It's here. And I, I was actually just, I had just enough time before your stream started to, to watch that video Clownfish just put out. I, I, I'm, I agree with them. This is gaming journalism's last stand. It's not going to go as well as it did last time. Like, they're done. Oh, yeah, no. Like, uh, I'm going to have to make a video for tomorrow on this because it, it took forever for any of the mainstream media outlets to kind of, like, get their story together. And now, finally... A couple of them are coming out with their little retarded takes, and it's so weak, man. Like, they've got nothing. All they've got is like, oh, it's totally not happening. Ignore the evidence, it's not. Yeah, or, or better yet, uh, was it the, the Kotaku article? Like, uh, almost oh, yeah. everyone on Twitter pointed it out, that they, they opened their article with, uh, oh, all these alt-right Nazis just out of nowhere started harassing Sweet Baby Inc. Yeah, it, it's not that they were only responding to them trying to cancel a Steam curator. No, nah, no, nah, they were just innocently minding their own business. They didn't do so nothing. And all these yeah. evil gamer gators just attack. It, it's just like the original Gamergate. <laughs> but this time it, it, they don't have the they, they don't have the 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 the, the um, currency anymore. Like back then, they could say like, "Oh, we're being harassed there. There's Nazis," and people were like, "Oh God, there's Nazis." Oh, oh, dude, this is so uh, another uh, bring up clownfish again. They did a video yesterday, and and neon like he hit the nail on the head. Unlike La unlike GamerGate 1.0 this time around. When this news hits the mainstream sites, like when normies hear about Sweet Baby Inc. and what's going on, their initial reaction isn't like, oh my God, those evil alt-right Nazis are at it again. So no, like every single normie reaction I've seen has been, so that's why all our games have been fucking shit for the past 10 years? Yep. Like, yeah, they're actually finally waking there up. Like, questions. wow, I thought Fire something was answer. off. I thought <laughs> our games were getting worse. This is why? Yeah, because they but don't yeah, it, have it an argument anymore. anymore. Like, even The Guardian made an article where they got a conspiracy theorists, And then they go on to admit to every accusation in the article. It's like, you, you can't just say conspiracy theorists and then go, yeah, this actually did happen. Like, it doesn't no, they, work anymore. They, so, so remember when uh, when that 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 one localizer got got busted for trying to censor? So I think it's for Discotech Media, like one of those older anime they were releasing. And, and when when you saw some of his peers bitching about it, like the, one of them outright admitted, like, yeah, like my problem so isn't that you know what you did; it's that you proved the alt right chuds right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's they're the mask is completely off. Like they're they're a cornered rat. Like they're they're being shut down. Like Clownfish says, they've never been profitable. None of these quote unquote news, they're drama sites, but they call themselves news. They've never turned a profit. They've been held up by venture capital. And now even the activist investors are running out of money. They're like, okay, you know. When, when the economy was good and my other sources of income were bringing in a lot of money, I could afford to literally throw away millions of dollars to keep you idiots afloat. But I can't afford to do that anymore. <laughs> so, so in a way, like I've said on my own stream, I, I, I it's a long shot, but how, how can I not think that may, maybe Biden is secretly one of us? Because <laughs> hi him completely destroying the economy has ended wokeness. Because like, wokeness can only exist w when rich activists have way too much time and money on their hands so they could spend their time making the world a better place or whatever the fuck they do. Th they can't afford to anymore. The economy is shit. All these, all these diversity and inclusion jobs that only existed when companies were flush with cash and they could afford to virtue signal, they can't afford it anymore. <laughs> Wokeness, for all they bitch about my capitalism, 
wokeness can only exist in a healthy capitalist economy. As soon as that economy slows down, wokeness is gone. It is. And it's beginning to claim the bigger companies too. So the uh, main topic for today, Warner Brothers. <laughs> Hell yeah. They are doing... I, I, Okay, I, I gotta admit, so they uh, they admitted they weren't doing very well. The Suicide Squad was a big loss, obviously. But I, I figured rust. Hogwarts Legacy would have would have kept them a little bit in the game. But they've written that off. And now they've also written off Rooster Teeth, which that one confuses me somewhat. Because I haven't kept up with Rooster Teeth in like a decade, but... Uh, I know Rooster Teeth doesn't confuse me at all. Like it, it's been about a decade since they've been relevant, so uh, it makes sense they've be shut down. I mean, I feel like I I see like the Ruby stuff all the time. I thought that was still doing relatively okay. Uh, you know, personal opinion, uh, I. Unlike a lot of people, I, I actually somewhat liked Ruby for like the first two seasons, and then Monty Ohm died, and it all and it started going downhill from there. Uh, um, although really, um, uh, it was the the Kick Vic situation that like that that's turned most of their remaining fan base against them, because uh, Vic was the voice of Crow, and they they threw him under the bus when that whole thing happened. So that. I think that was really the beginning. I mean, they've they've been on the downward trend for a while, but th I think that was when, instead of an a, an easy slope downwards, it just turned into a cliff. Mm, yeah, because they seem to have fallen off like really hard. Well, and, and I, I think part of that is they sold out. Like, yeah, I I did so mention that. No, so Ruby in particular. Uh, so Monty was the original creator. So it makes sense when the original creator dies. It, it, it's very rare. Like, like we got some examples like with Wheel of Time when Robert Jordan so died and Brandon Sanderson, Sanderson yeah. finished it. So, so Sanderson himself is a great author and he was a fan of Wheel of Time. He was able to do it justice. He was able to end it properly. But that is exceedingly rare. Like usually when the original creator of something dies, it kind of goes to shit. Like, uh, unless it's like in American comics where they switch authors and artists like every couple of uh, runs anyway. So I, I I guess you could say, you know, you know what, Ruby in particular, yeah, you know, losing the original creator obviously hurt him. But for the rest of Rooster Teeth, what did him in is they sold out. They 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 sold themselves. I mean, who, who was it? Was it Otter Meat? No, that was Crunchyroll. Like, I, God, I can't, I can't remember. So, so uh, I, I know... Rooster Teeth didn't sell out to Warner. Like they sold out to a company that was bought by Warner. Like it's, I can't remember off the top of my head, but point is they sold out. They, and, which they didn't need to do. It's, it's like George Lucas. Lucas had no reason to sell out to Disney. He was already a billionaire. It, it, it's not like he needed the money. Like, I, I could understand with some creatives, like they they really really want to create their 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 passion, their their dream IP, Heresy's but they the don't have the money. Fire They've fallen the on hard times. <laughs> they have to accept that corporate leash in order to to be able to finish what they're doing. I have some sympathy for them, but like Lucas, like fuck him. Like uh, when he cries about how Disney did him wrong, fuck him. He sold out. He didn't need to. Like I don't want to hear him complaining. He did that to himself. But and Rooster Teeth is kind of in the same boat. Like I, I don't, unless they did a really good job hiding their horrible finances. I'm quite sure they were financially well off. Like they, they didn't need to sell out, but they did, and now they have a corporate overlord calling all their shots. Like we, we see that in every industry, don't we? Like with with gaming in particular, independent studio gets bought out by big publisher. They release they release one good game, which is something they were already working on. That you know, the, they just you know, dumped money into it, and then they turned to shit because now they got some some focus groups and committees making decisions for them. Like that's ultimately what killed Rooster Teeth, in my opinion. It's they uh, they, they they sold out. Uh, th their corporate overlords had no idea what they were doing. They didn't understand the audience at all, and this is the result. Yep. And I've been, um, I looked into a little bit. So one of the things, uh, back in 2020, eons ago, 
Rooster Teeth did announce the usual corporate initiatives, so diversity, equity, inclusion, the usual, uh, including hashtag Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yep. oh, oh man, uh, I think it was it was a June the King. I think did it did a uh, he did like a two hour documentary on the downfall of Rooster Teeth. Uh, I would highly recommend everyone watch that. It it, it was pretty good. They kind of covered this too. Like like part of it is how they 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 used to be like a bunch of fun like it, this yep. is often used as an insult like they used to be like a bunch of frat boys like they 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 had a lot they knew how to have fun together they enjoyed themselves and then towards the end when they were falling apart they were having struggle sessions and crying over offending someone and oh, i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah. They, they they went complete cuck like they there was no, there's no saving them at that point but but i i, I don't think it I think in this case, Razor Fist was right. You know, how he he says it's not get woke, go broke. It's you no know, no go broke, get woke, and ultimately croak. And and uh, that's in reference to uh, like some companies they do get woke and go broke. Like other companies, they're already failing, and they view getting woke as their their hail mary, like their last ditch efforts to stay alive. And uh, and. The, you may think that's stupid, but it kind of makes sense when you see all the money that gets, uh, like all, all the venture capital that was being thrown into woke companies. So that that's what they were betting on. Like, okay, if we could just get one more, you know, seed round, or like one more round of venture capital money, maybe we could turn this around. And I think that was Rooster Teeth, honestly. Like, they were already kind of struggling, like before this woke shit happened with them. Because they sold out and they had corporate overlords making decisions for them. And these corporate overlords, they I, I, just once, I would love to see a corporate overlord with the brains to put an actual fan in charge of creative decisions. That would solve all these problems. If they had someone who's actually a fan of what they're making, like give them veto power over stupid creative decisions, give, give them creative control. Because what they do now is like none of the people making the decisions have any idea what they're doing. Like they don't know, know or understand the audience. They don't know. Like they're professional managers. They know how to manage people, but they don't know shit about what those people actually do. So that's why you got those focus groups and committees and uh, just and why they listen to everyone but their target audience <laughs> and then are shocked when they lose all their money. Yep. So, like in my opinion, anyway, I think that's what happened to Rooster Teeth. Like even before they, I mean, I, I, I think they went broke first. They've been broke for a while, but since they are they're part of a major corporation, uh, they they were kept afloat for like, a lot of these major corporations. They they'll keep unprofitable branches around for decades sometimes. So, like they 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 were already broke at the time the wokeness started, in my opinion. It's very possible. Uh, in fact, in 2021, AT and T, which were the ones who uh, who owned them, and then they got merged into the Warner Bros. Uh, Discovery thing, they tried to sell them, but couldn't find a buyer. Like there, were, there was nobody willing to pick it up. Yeah. Buzzfeed. <laughs> oh crap! Yeah, I just thought of a similar situation for some reason. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's rumored now, albeit not entirely confirmed, that. Um, they hadn't been profitable for 10 years. And when when did they get bought by AT&T? <laughs> Around about the same time, I imagine. <laughs> and it's also the, the bloat, though. Because, okay, they're producing some you know decent quality stuff, fair enough. But they had 150 employees. The fucking wages yeah. to pay 150 people every month. Oh, hell yeah. Like, that, that's another... The, the bloat is my favorite topic on my channel. Like, I, I even pull up this uh, the, the, this old chart from, like, over a decade ago that Charles Hugh Smith put out, like, the, the life cycle of a corporation. <laughs> And, 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 yeah, that... that so, the, the, and the reason bloat is such a big deal, like, um, Squeenix is the best example. And we could actually talk about Final Fantasy later. That's pretty fun to laugh at, too. Definitely. But uh, they, 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 could they, they could sell 4 million copies of a game, and they're crying, oh, my God, it's such a failure. It didn't meet expectations. But that's because, like, they're operating in an environment where you need to sell, like, 7 million just to break even. Like, I think that was the number for the, for the Miles Morales 2 game. 
It was uh, it needed to break seven million just to break even. Like they apparently got up to ten million, so I guess good on them. They made a little bit of profit, but uh, but yeah, they, that's and and whereas an indie, an indie can sell fifty thousand copies, and they're like, holy shit, I've never had more money. This is great, <laughs> and it's all about the bloat. So when a five man indie dev team, so no, if if they uh, they they make a million dollars. They 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 split it five ways. They get two hundred thousand each. Nice, everyone's happy. If if a triple A company like they they, it's it's not even just the like with Rooster Teeth, right? The hundred fifty person team, that's not all they have to pay for. Uh-huh. They also have to pay for the Warner executives and all of their bonuses and their third yachts. They got to pay for the shareholders. They got to pay dividends to the shareholders. They, they, they got to pay for all the other branches of Warner that are unprofitable. All that bloat stacks up exponentially. So, so, so it, it's even if they only had a five-person team put put in this game. It, it, it's actually City Skylines too. That's another. That's I, I know yeah, that that hurt you almost as much as it did me. But oh, yeah. uh, incredibly yeah, that, disappointing. That, yeah, that that's. I mean, I still think the game's going to be good once they fix the performance issues. To be honest, I'm just waiting on it. But uh, like the the team that made that game is only like 20 people, I think. But uh, but they're part of Paradox. Like they're not only that. Like, just because that team is small, like you'd think, oh, they don't need to sell all that much. Like they don't have all that much overhead. Yeah, but they have the overhead of of their parent company and all their investors. Like. That's the thing that a lot of people never consider. Like, whereas if you're independent and like uh, Larian, I guess I'll give them credit there. Like they, they got a, they got a few, I think even Tencent invested in them too. They got a few big corporate investors, but the, the one guy who like the CEO of Larian is the majority owner. So he, he still basically owns everything. Yeah. They, if they make a profit, they get to keep most of it because they, they don't have nearly as much bloat. But all these other companies, no, like they, they, uh, have you sat through the ending credits of your average AAA game lately? That shit takes half an hour. Like those are all the people whose paychecks had to be covered by that shit. Yep. I, um, and then all the investors. I, I finished uh, the FNAF uh, DLC the other day and saw, sat through the credits on that. And that's even not a very complicated game. That's a relatively minor studio now. And it's still so many people. And it, it basically, it, it turns the gaming industry into a situation in which every product you make needs to be a PAL world level success to be able to meet you know earnings expectations because that's the thing too these companies don't expect to break even break even doesn't pay for the next title break even doesn't keep the fucking lights on they're expecting two three times the return on investments right this is why we consider a movie a flop if it only earns a few million yeah because uh, they uh it's opportunity cost like that's the reason why like say uh say you have you're an investor you got millions of dollars to throw around and you got two companies to choose from. They both make a profit. One of them will double your money. One of them will give you back 10 times as much. Which one are you going to dump your money into? So like that that's what they're dealing with. They're trying to appeal to those types of investors. So it's not enough to break even. It's not enough to make a little profit. If you're not making all the money, the investors are like, why don't I just invest in your competition that's making all the money? Yeah. And bearing in mind, too, this is money you put down that you get back in, like, three or four years. That's how long it takes to make these games. And they need to earn enough money to keep the lights on for three or four years afterwards. When you then need a profit of $7 million just to pay for your preceding project, you then need to find some way to find money to keep that going for another four years. It's obviously not sustainable. Mm-hmm. And then again, uh, throw in all, everything else too, like the you know, paying dividends, paying the executives, mm-hmm. pay, pay, paying for other unprofitable ventures. Electricity, the company has. taxes, yeah. office space. Yeah, yeah. All of these things. Oh, oh, and when it comes to physical, I mean, this. So w- w- the main reason everyone's trying to go to digital, there's like two reasons. One, one of them is obviously more control. Uh, another reason is if you, if you sell a digital game for 60 bucks 
you, you get to keep most of that money. Even if you don't own the storefront, you, you still keep 70% of it on average. If you go through a physical retailer, it, it's way less than that. Cause like the, the, the you got to pay the cost of producing the physical goods, pay the cost of shipping them. The, the retailer takes at least half of the money. Like, like by the, by the time everyone else gets their cut, you, you make way less money. Mm -hmm. So like that, that's, that's one of the reasons everyone's trying to go to digital. Like it, it is just way easier too, but uh yeah, it, it, there's so many people taking like skimming money off the top, and it, it's yeah. And, and then again, you then you got like Pal World. You got a small like how many how many people does Pocket Pair have? It's less than a hundred, I like for sure. Oh, well, way less than a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I think they're in the like the, the the very low double digits, and 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 then here they are selling like twenty million copies. Like yeah, those they're set for life. Yep. Unless they bankrupt themselves on server costs anyway, but <laughs> but no, like, I I think this is good though. If all of these bloated AAA companies want to do this to themselves, they want to put themselves in a position where unless they sell 30 million copies, they're a bust. It's great for indies because guess what? Uh, you know, I, I'd only need to sell 50,000 to have it a, a considered a massive success. Mm -hmm. and, and there's way, way more than 50,000 people out there that are that are starved for good content. Absolutely. And... The thing is, too, like these, the companies, because Rooster Teeth now under, uh, there are some rumors going around that uh, there's some interest people in buying up some of the properties, which wouldn't surprise me. Like, you've still got relatively recognizable stuff, and if you can run it with, you know, less than 150 million people, there might still be profits here to be made, right? But Warner Brothers itself is beginning to crack at the seams like the entire company like people keep talking about how much trouble disney is in and they're in a lot of trouble warner brothers has like one successful entity under its belt at the moment and it's fucking barbie it's like god yeah. help me it, well um when it comes to movies yeah i mean i think um unless they pull a game of thrones uh, they well, they own Game of Thrones, but I, I guess that, that that's still big enough. As a House of the Dragon was still okay. It did so all I, right, I, I but they, I think they did fine. It, it certainly was no Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's also just the the, the weird refusal to to go with what works. Mm. It's like. And the worst part, too, is they're looking Service at Barbie 2 uh, right now, if they can make that. What do you think the odds are that they'll manage to get the same kind of weird pro-many message that they accidentally Harrison got into question. one in a second answer. one, in a sequel? <laughs> Well, I think the the odds of that are about as high as making Hogwarts Legacy 2 not be a live service. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, these idiots are in case like, they always take the wrong message from everything. Yes. In fact, I believe they even um there we go. Yep, I found the uh, one of the articles mentioning it. I'll link that there. But yeah, Hogwarts uh, Legacy 2 is already set to go live service. Uh, and apparently the the Quidditch game they're working on, that's why there was no Quidditch in Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, that one's also reported to be probably chock full of microtransactions and the usual. Mm, not surprised, yeah. Well, it, it, it's a mobile game anyway, right? The the the, the Quidditch one. I don't so. know. I, I we've seen very little of it, but I I'd, I'd presume so. Let's see if I can find any yeah. more announcements on it. Uh. Yeah, it, it must be rough being a fan of Harry Potter now. Uh, you you got you got one so bit of respite with uh, Hogwarts Legacy that ended up being okay, and then uh, you know they're gonna screw it up going forward. Yeah, because the thing is, Hogwarts Legacy was a very simple game. Really, it was just like, okay, what what do the fans want? We'll just give them a museum ride of Hogwarts, and you get to go on some adventures, classic adventures, fight some trolls, simple stuff. And that is exactly what people wanted. After being starved of the simple stuff, that was all you needed. Like, it's the same way people are crying out for just basic stories now. Like, we've, we've done 
Superman turns evil too many times. And people are just like, can we just have Superman, please? And that was what people wanted in the Hogwarts Legacy. And they got it. And it sold like 20 million copies. Then they make Suicide Squad, in which the entire point is that they kill all of your heroes. And weirdly enough, nobody liked it. Strange. Yeah, I'm surprised we're still doing that. Like, there, there, there was a time when the whole subverting expectations thing, subverting genres was big. And, and I get the first time it's done, like, like when, when Madoka Magica did that to the magical girl genre, for yep. example. Like, okay, you know, the first time you do it, it's uh, okay, it's new, it's different. That's okay, I could get behind that. And then by the next year, you already had like 20 copycats. Yeah, like, that, I, I think that's that's where we're at with all this dark, edgy anti-hero stuff right now. Like the, the the dark, edgy anti-heroes are so overdone. People are like, "Can I just get a regular hero again?" Exactly. Like, because we like, got that would be a breath of fresh it. air. Yeah. We um we got um the Injustice comic book series. Are you familiar with that one? I'm I'm aware of it, but I didn't read it, so I, I can't really say much about it. It was released in 2013. It, like, it's a different fucking age, right? And it's Evil Superman, full budget, massive release, uh, like many, 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 many volumes, etc. Pretty good stuff. And they could do that once, and people would be like, okay, that's pretty nice. And it, uh, it had the game series, of course, it had the comics. They toyed with a movie that never materialized. But the problem is, it's been 10 years... And we're still on this shit. Like, ah. I, I am still not convinced that we have superhero fatigue. I am convinced that we have the same fucking movie fatigue. Yeah, yeah no, we got dog shit fatigue. Because <laughs> yes. uh, you know, Japan releases My Hero Academia and One Punch Man. Yep. And they do just fine. And, yeah. and, and yet the, the West, so, like, for some reason, they, they can't do their, their own creation better than Japan can. Like, My Hero Academia is basically just the classic superhero story. That is pretty much what it is. And it's on what season now? Four or five? I think it's five. But but it, it's actually coming to an end, though. So... Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know if they continue everything after you know after All for One. I don't know if there's anything after that. But I, th I think the next season may be the last. Like it, it is kind of getting into the end game. That is one of the strengths of it, though. Like, because if it, yeah, it ends, actually has an ending. Yeah. yeah. Like we've been dealing with. I, I mentioned this uh, in many occasions when I ever talked about this. But Batman is like eighty-five years old. Like, the fuck has been around for yep. damn near a century. Yeah, that, that's that's something I always... like. Um, the West, for some reason, they, they're they so dependent on 80-year-old you know, characters, like you said. Right? Like, that's all anyone cares about. It's like, yeah, but if you look at manga, like, you, you got a few long-running manga, obviously, like, like One Piece, you know, Dragon Ball, like, Rip Akira Toriyama. Mm -hmm. uh you, you got was um ah god what there was in um uh, was it detective conan yeah we we got we got some re uh, golgo 13 like you got some really long running ones out there but like got, most of um... the stuff is it's it's like it's new stuff like like if you and most of any anime season is based on manga that's new ip and, yeah. and like that's but like uh, demon slayer it's not that demon slayer is not that old it's not yeah, and and it it became the hottest shit in the world for a few years. Like the the West can't do that anymore because, like, honestly, I think it's they they dug their own grave because they, they conditioned their audiences to only care about the old characters, to only care about Batman and Superman and Spider Man, all these other characters created before your grandpa was born. Like that, they conditioned people to to you know, only go back to those characters. And and meanwhile in Japan, yeah, you got a few long running IPs, but they, like, people in Japan, they look forward to new stuff. Like whenever a new manga gets added to Shonen Jump, people are are excited to see it. But like that, that's not the case here with the, with the Western comic industry. Like it, it's almost yeah. impossible to introduce a new character, like all like just just straight up, like oh here's a new book with a new character. Like you, you got to have them be a side character in an established character's book first. Guaranteed like, like, with, like what they did with Harley Quinn, like when they was Batman the Animated Series created Harley Quinn. 
people liked her. They put her in the comics and then eventually she has her own stuff. Like that's about the only way you can do it in the Western industry now, because everyone is so conditioned to own, to only read the, the 80 year old shit. Yeah. And th there's the thing too, right? The side character thing, something that is desperately needed in the West is something along the lines of, of jump, uh, the manga, the manga collection things, right? Because that's a wonderful way to introduce a wide variety of things and give new things a shot at existing. There are so many mangas in Japan that are actually given, like, proper publications and a chance to make it in the wild. Whereas over here in the West, unless you want to take a product to market by yourself, like you've done, for example... What what opportunities yeah. do you have? You know, you got to go yeah. Yeah. knock on DC's door or Marvel and beg, I guess. Yeah, and and, they, and here again, we go back to my point of conditioning the audience. I I I do like the way that so Japan so does it with uh, with weekly or monthly magazines. Mm -hmm. like every, yep. I think Shonen Shonen Jump is weekly. Like every week, they put out this two hundred fucking page giant magazine that has a, a like one chapter of 20 different manga in it and yeah you're right like that that if you're if you're buying the weekly magazine for like three or four manga and a new one shows up most people will be like oh i'll check this out maybe it's good but i, I don't think that model can work in the u.s like i don't think it works anywhere but japan because everywhere else like uh uh I, I think they're trying to release weekly now on some digital services like i know that i know that's doing okay but I, I really don't think you could do a business model like that in the U.S. Because like the, the, the people here, like even the people that read manga, which is you know pretty much all the comic reading audience now, they 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 don't read like weekly magazines, or they wouldn't even if it was available. They wait they wait for the Tonkabon. They they wait for the like eight nine chapters in one book to come out. Yeah, it, it, it would be really rough to do. I mean, I, I think the um, from personal experience, I think the best option in the West would actually be start with a web comic, and if it catches on and explodes, then then you 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 uh, do physical prints of that. Maybe do some bonus chapters only in the physical printings or something. Like that, that might yeah. be the best way to introduce new comics in the West. Because we, we need some new way to do it. Some some way to get people interested and into it and a nice way to show off new things. Because that, that is a large part of the stagnation in our system. And this is in large part also due to the fact that we have completely failed to control the corporations, right? The We should never have our entire entertainment industry dominated by, like, two companies. Or, hell... Ha Disney owns Star Wars. Disney owns Marvel. Disney sits on like 70% of the entertainment in the West, like a giant squatting shit. Yeah, and, and that that's the sign of a dead industry, really. Like th That's why I, I've been maintaining for a while that the game industry is on its last legs, at least as it exists right now, the AAA portion yep. of it. because It's rapidly consolidating too. Yes, and, and that's where I was getting at. Like you can tell when an industry is on its last legs when when all like every week you hear about another buyout or consolidation or merger, like that. That's and that's an industry in the in the latter stages of its life, because uh, the line must go up, right? Investors always must need to be doubling, tripling, quadrupling their profits, or else they leave. Line must go up. You need you need to make all the money. And yep. and eventually you you hit maximum saturation like you like that's what happened with Facebook, like everyone in the fucking world who who could have gotten Facebook and was interested already either had it or didn't want it, so so wh where do you go from there, like, like at, at that point uh, the the only way you can keep increasing your profits is to buy out competitors really and that's that's what's happening and we're gonna get to the point where there's only gonna be like two or three companies that own everything. And then they're going to just collapse. They're going to pull a THQ one of these days. Yeah, like this is the failure of uh, like anti-competitive measures in the West. It, yep. it, we had a system in place to prevent this, but we've completely failed to use it. And like in gaming, right? Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard. No, that's not even just Blizzard. That's Activision 
and Blizzard, and that's mm-hmm. after they bought Bethesda. Like shit. Yeah, uh, now, 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 you know what's funny about that? Even after buying Activision Blizzard, they're still like third place behind Tencent and Sony when it comes to gaming. <laughs> yep. So, so that that's what I found funny how how Sony tried they were trying so fucking hard to block the deal. It's like, hey, you know, you know what? Uh, I I I don't like either Microsoft or Sony, but most of the problems in the AAA industry are Sony's fault. L- l- like uh, uh, for Microsoft for years now, they've been try like they've been trying to you know, end exclusivity effectively. Like the, they're like, oh, I, we want our games on everything, and and uh, things like crossplay even. You want to know why crossplay isn't the norm? It's because of Sony. Many developers have talked about this. Like they they release their games across every platform. PC, obviously, you don't need anyone's permission. Nintendo, fine with it. Microsoft, fine with it. Sony, no. You better pay us more money if you want us to allow you to do <laughs> crossplay. And Sony were the ones that for years were buying up third-party studios and making them exclusive. Sony were the ones that, remember remember PlayStation Advantage? When, when uh, like, entire game modes in Call of Duty, for example, only so available on PlayStation for the first year? Which, uh, you know, you, you, uh, ignorant people might think it's no big deal because it's only a year. Yeah, Call of Duty's a yearly release. By the time the exclusivity window is up, everyone moves on to the next game. <laughs> it was all Sony that was doing the garbage business practices like that. And eventually Microsoft had enough and they're like, okay, if you refuse to play nice, we're going to play your game and we're going to start buying everything up. And then they're like, that's illegal. You can't do that. <laughs> like, I, I just love how they got just butt raped at their own game. Yep. Only problem is we're the ones suffering in the end. No, I disagree. Like I, I've given up on AAA completely. Like the whole, the, it can all collapse. Like the most recent game I was playing, it's a it's a Korean indie game that was originally a mobile game called Witchspring R. I can't remember the last time I just had that much like genuine fun playing Fire a game the answer. <laughs> and, and getting invested in the characters and the story like that. Like I was like, wow, this. I, I feel like I've gone back in time like 15, 20 years. Like, yeah, who needs AAA? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because this is kind of a self-correcting problem in a way. Because if we're sitting here thinking like, okay, we need independent outlets, basically. We need some way to discover things and find them and, and be pitched to them without the big companies. Well, Steam's kind of turning into that. Because Steam, largely due to the fact that uh, Gaben refuses to keel over dead and may he live forever, has remained a fairly free and open platform in an environment where every other platform is becoming more and more insular. When he finally keels over, that's when I'm getting really scared. You know, I, I agree, man. The, the, I, I, I'm really worried that uh, Steam is pretty much like the, the only option on PC. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does annoy me, like when I say like there's no censorship on PC. Like, but Steam, that I I said PC, not Steam. Calm your tits, okay? But I, I will admit that Steam is um, like th- that's where like 99% of the money is in PC gaming, unfortunately. But um, if if you want to look at the positive, though, if Steam goes full, you know, console level of walled garden bullshit. They're not going to be the monopoly for long because uh, it, it's it's way easier to launch another PC storefront than it is to create a hardware console and and get people to adopt it. So it um, it, all you got to do is make another like like Gog for a, for the longest time they were actually I mean I don't I, I'm gonna have to do some research to see where CD Projekt Red actually fucked it up but Gog was doing well for a while like they're a good alternative like you could buy. A lot of the same games and without DRM, it's it's nice. So unlike the Epic Game Store, which is like which is all the worst aspects of Steam with a lot more tacked onto it, like if if you do something like GOG, you could actually see a success. Like, but not not yet. I I don't think you can compete with Steam right now unless you're specifically making a platform for the types of games that Steam bans. Like, I really don't think there's any point in competing with Steam right now. 
but should Steam go full walled garden bullshit censorship like like all the consoles are? Th- yeah, I I think it'll be relatively easy to launch a competitor. Uh, you're probably going to see like two, three hundred different competitors crop up in the course of a year, and eventually one or two of them will stick around. Mm-hmm. And that is, um, I'm kind of hoping that's what's eventually going to happen with the other entertainment as well, because. Um... I'm sure you've been paying a bit of attention to this as well. Uh, Warner Brothers, this isn't the first round of layoffs they've had either, because this year has been brutal. But there's been a slow decline in Warner Brothers in particular. Like, most companies have held off on the layoffs for ages, because I presume they just figured the money would last forever. But WB has been bleeding for a long time now. Yeah, and I think part of that is, I mean, I think part of it was before Zaslav, but honestly, I think Zaslav is a big part of this because he, like, especially when he he did the Discovery merger, Mm -hmm. they, I'm quite sure part of the deal was, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have to cut all these damn expenses. Like, like we, we, we need to get rid of this debt. So yep. I, I, I really do think that the Discovery Warner merger was a big part of why they've been laying off way sooner than most others, because like they, they had to as, as part of that deal. Yeah, they like they need to clean a house and they need to clean a lot of house. And it's clear that they oh, didn't yep. clean enough house, like because you wouldn't shut Paris down the question. like Fire Rooster the Teeth answer. with all of its... <laughs> At least, again, recognizable properties. You've still got Red vs. Blue. You've still got Ruby. Like, there's no reason why you couldn't revitalize this. Well, th- there's no reason you need Rooster Teeth to revitalize so it. Shut it. Because uh, everyone who made Rooster Teeth good has is long gone. Mm-hmm. So uh, j- just shut Rooster Teeth down. Give a competent studio control. Like, actually, I, I, oddly enough, I think Crunchyroll may actually do it justice. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> last I heard, you know, Crunchyroll is having a Japanese studio, uh, or, or they 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 had a Japanese studio reboot Ruby. Basically, like okay, if you put it in, con- and, uh, uh, and now that Monty Ohm is gone, then the next Paris best option for Ruby is to give some answer. Japanese studio control of it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, probably not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like that's and and, and like you said, uh, they're 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 cleaning house. The There's only the way question. any of these Fire giant the bloated <laughs> activist filled garbage corporations, the only chance they have to survive is if they have their version of Elon Musk come in. Yep. and fire like 90% of them. Like, I'm not even kidding. It has to be that Service big of a cut. Citizenship. Because, uh, like, and, and I, I know this from personal experience. A lot of the jobs I've worked at, I, I, I was on like a 30-person team when I worked at that a big defense contractor. Only around like maybe three to five of us did any real work. Everyone else was kind of just bloat. And and then the management really didn't like it when we pitched them an idea to to both like boost profits and cut costs because they apparently i guess they had some deal with the government that they have to employ a certain amount of people like that's where most of this bloat honesty comes from like meeting diversity quotas me like meeting all these other quotas to get government benefits once those aren't worth it anymore oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna be seeing like 90 percent cuts at these companies because a lot of these companies yeah like the, most people working like you saw with twitter Twitter got rid of like 90% of their people. There was a little bit of uh, of technical issues for like a week or two, which may or may not have been related to sabotage, by the way. And then it, it just evened out. Twitter works just like it always did now with only 10% of its staff. That just shows that you, you don't need the, oh, oh, even something like Patreon. Like, oh my, like when you look at what they do, like, how are your expenses that high? Why do you need that many people to, to just basically be a middleman? Like, all these companies could stand to have, like, a 90% haircut. And if they don't do that, they're going to die. Like, they have to now. Absolutely. We are going to be heading for much leaner times and much more experimental uh, times, too. I'm sure you've seen this. The uh, Suicide Squad Isekai... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not. I've been, I'm. I'm not interested, though. Yes, you know. I. I. You know. I. I. 
I just said the best place for Ruby would be in, in the control of some Japanese studio. But on the flip side, I'd rather Japan not bother with Western crap. Like, I, I like their original things better. I, I don't want Japan's take on Star Wars, Japan's take on Marvel. I want more One Punch Man. I want more Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Just make that. But that's, you know, may, maybe it'll end up being good. I don't know. I mean, is it good? It's, it's already out, right? I haven't watched it yet, but I'm probably planning on, because I think this is the Western company's best cynical chance at survival. It is to take their stuff, which is flagging in popularity. Like, Suicide Squad was flagging in popularity with its first movie. Then the second one was pretty funny. I kind of revitalized a little bit. The game <laughs> puts the, the knee on the neck of it again. And it's just, I, it's this weird obsession with DC as well to try and force the characters. Like how they keep trying with Aquaman, for example. They, they really want Harley Quinn to be a thing. And throwing well, it to yo, Japan you... and just seeing what happens is probably Harris, their best bet. Fire so so the you answer. know why, right? <laughs> uh, um, like, what was it? Uh, Riri Williams? I think they, they were pushing. Oh, no, no. It's Miss Miss Marvel. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, Kamala Khan. Uh, they were they were pushing her so so much because one of the executives at Marvel was involved in the creation of that character, so she got massive money every time the character made a lot of money. Like th that's why they're pushing like s very specific characters because certain individuals at the top stands to personally gain a lot of money <laughs> if those characters do well. So they they refuse to let them die. Yep. I mean, what they really do need to do, they need to just divorce themselves from a lot of these characters because the established characters are too saturated. Um, there was an interesting attempt with Madam Webb. Did you, did you see that? Mm, um, with the, the movie? Yes, a movie. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I haven't watched a movie since... Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Good strategy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know. Uh, you know some people out there. They, they. I, I know a lot. Like as for example, I know he makes he makes money playing games he knows will be shit. Watching movies he knows will be shit. I, I'd rather spend my time on and money on good stuff. But yeah, I, I, what actually what surprised me about Madam Web was how quickly the the main cast turned on the movie though. Like I, even before the movie came out, they were distancing themselves from it. <laughs> like, I, I had no idea it was going to be this bad. <laughs> like, I, I fired my agent over this. <laughs> I half suspect this is some kind of marketing stunt. Like I'm, I'm so cynical in my old age that I look at Madame Web, and they, they clearly did some massive reshoots in this movie because there are attractive women in it wearing surprisingly little clothing yeah and... that that was that was my biggest shock as well like holy shit like all three of the main women in that movie actually look good what the fuck is this i'm not so used to that so yeah it was yeah. very weird and the the plot itself is awful the the peruvian of uh, venom spider-man is terrible the it, the entire story makes no sense and the fact that now all of them are coming out against it i'm half thinking that if i was in their position what I would do is I would make Madame Web into a meme, basically, to keep it in the spotlight and to keep the spotlight on the hot women who were in it and then try to tease out a sequel out of it where they just go like, okay, screw all of this awful, awful magical spider venom nonsense and just have three hot women in tight soothing cl clothing fighting the nebulous Why evil. <laughs> Now, uh, imagine if they advertised this movie like with Charlie's Angels style ads. Mm -hmm. Yep, th th that that could have gotten way more. But well, going back to what we said earlier, I don't I don't think it's possible for them to do that anymore. Like one of the points I make on my streams all the time is that like th these companies went too far. Like they they went all in on wokeness. They became dependent on woke initiatives and grants and government kickbacks. But more importantly, they padded. They're, and this is why they need to do 90% layoffs. They filled their ranks with woke activists. Yep. Could you imagine 
telling a current year Hollywood actress to be sexy, Service guaranteed she'd citizens. sue you for sexual harassment or something. Yeah, you know, they would have to. Um, they would have to do. See, I'm. I got. I think I've got my conspiracy theory here because most of the ones from Madame Web are fairly young, fairly inexperienced, fairly new actors. You could probably get them to do this. The only question is if you could find directors willing to do this because you would basically have to go full like mid 90s on this bitch like full american pie meets buffy and just try to work into the marketing and just pre the whole cross your fingers and hope mm -hmm. that somebody gets offended by it yeah. so you can go like look at this movie it's pissing off people yeah. And you better not pull a bait and switch either. Oh God! Like, you know, that, that, it, it, like people are so used to bait and switches now that you do it oh, yeah. one time, no one trusts you again. No subverting expectations. Just literally, literally make fucking Top Gun out of this, where you don't even know the name of who they're fighting. It's just like fantasy Russia, basically. Yeah, yeah, that that would be perfect. But but you know, like, like you you just said. In order to get back to making good content, you got to pretty much throw in the trash the past 20 years. Yeah. In order to make that happen, pretty much all the executives at these companies have to be fired and replaced. Because uh, it, it's it's the decisions of these executives that did that. Like that's that's one of the reasons Bob Iger is trying so damn hard. He doesn't want his mo legacy to be ruined. Mm -hmm. like, there, there's a lot it's all politics at these companies as long as the people who made these bad decisions still have positions of power at these companies none of them are gonna be willing to admit they made a mistake that they're the reason the company is struggling now and that that course correction needs to happen all those people have to be have to go they all have to be fired or else this like 90 percent cut twitter style or this whole thing is hopeless Yep, because you've got to burn the whole fucking thing, because the people at the top, a lot of people often ask, like, why don't you just fire the executive? Because the executive has a whole power structure, a whole system of middle management, hiring people, HR people. Like, these are mini kingdoms within companies with GDP of nations. You can't just fire them. If you want to rework, like, a company like Disney, for example, you have to fire thousands to get rid of that one executive that you need to get rid of and that's even assuming you manage to get like the the board positions and the authority to actually begin the process yep. of firing people yep and now and, and hear me out or all the competent people at this company can leave and form a competitor yep and and then when the old company gets bankrupted they buy up those ips and do them justice. Like that is a way easier way to do this. And and, and guess what? Like like let's imagine that happened with Disney. We already kind of see it with John Lasseter. They forced him out of Pixar. Pixar went to shit. He went on to Skydance. Skydance is basically what Pixar used to be, because all the talent at Pixar followed Lasseter to Skydance, which was you know, kind of fucking hilarious. Like we just need more of that on a bigger scale. If the, the t all the talent that made these companies good in their prime were to leave and, and start a new company, and uh, and they could even reap... Look, we've seen this with a few other companies in the past where, um, uh, a, 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 like with Atari, I Harrison think. Like how many different Ataris have existed the over the years <laughs> because the brand keeps getting re... Um, it keeps getting bought and reused. Yeah, we, 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 so something like that. Like, imagine if all the competent people at Disney left and made a competitor and they'd have all the connections with the investors too. They could convince, like, that's what happened with, uh, with O'Keefe, right? At Project Veritas. Mm -hmm. When, when Project Veritas forced him out, all the investors followed him. When, when he, for, when he formed O'Keefe Media Group, he took all their investors with him. See, that, that's the kind of stuff you can do if, if all the competent people leave and start over. They could reach out, like, to directly to the shareholders and the investors, convince them to follow him. And, uh, so you'd have, you know, whatever Disney 2.0 would be. They, they, all the talent goes there. They, they bring back the glory days of Disney. Disney proper goes bankrupt. They buy up. Disney proper, and then they just rename themselves to Disney. <laughs> yeah. like, it, it, it's the same brand under the under the competent people, but like that's the best way to get rid of all the bloat. 
just you know collapse the old brand, buy it up in a bankruptcy auction, and, and then uh, you know rebrand yourself as the old brand, and then don't hire all the parasites back. Like that. That's I think that's the best way to do it. Will anyone do it? Probably not. But that would be the, if you actually want want to save the the brand itself. That might be the only way. Yeah, and like there's every opportunity to do that now. Like we're already seeing a lot of um, independent things beginning to rise because they're willing to do what the companies aren't willing to do. And even the more established ones, like Skydance is a good example. Uh, they did Reacher, uh, which is it's basically what we're asking for, but for frustrated housewives. The main character is this enormous, handsome, beefcake motherfucker who keeps losing his shirt all the time, and it's just house mom porn, and like, yep, this probably sells like mad. And yes, yes, it does. So, uh, everywhere I hear, I, I hear them bitching about all the toxic masculinity. like, And yet it's primarily women that like it huh i mean no guys like it too because of the focus on action but uh th th this just reminds i mean it's a bit off topic but th this reminds me of all the feminists and manginas reading about struggle snuggle porn mm -hmm. when it's primarily women that uh that, that watch that like i don't know what it is like women's fantasy seems to be like some some powerful dude forcing him, himself on them like with guys a guy's fantasy is getting a woman to voluntarily submit to him. Like, like it, it kind of ruins it if you got to force her to do it. But with women, it's primarily women that watch the st the struggle snuggle prawn. So, so it, I, I don't know who you're bitching to. Like most guys wouldn't care if that went away. <laughs> it, it's women that that are propping that genre up. Feminists say the exact opposite of what they want. A beautiful example just the other day. I, I take it you saw Anita Sarkeesian's wedding. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, you know what? <laughs> if, if any guy were to marry her, he'd have to be, by her own definition, a, a, a raging sexist and misogynist. So what option does she have? That's true. Like, you can just imagine, too. Like She's been holding out because she's probably pretty well off at this point she she sucked at the teat of the industry for years uh, her patreon was well, doing she, amazingly for a while she, she gets to randomly go to sweden just to have a 40-year birthday yeah. like wedding themed birthday party like that that can't have been cheap no like she's she's clearly quite well off and yet there's just nobody around who's willing to marry this woman huh maybe she's just a well, raging I mean, a-hole or maybe uh Maybe she's waiting for well, that six uh, meters tall blonde barbarian to violate her. Maybe, like, or, or it could just be like a. a, a um, this is something that they would talk about in the manosphere all the time. Men and women aren't attracted to the same things, like, and, and that's the problem a lot of women have. Like they they project their own desires onto men. You know, they they want a guy that has a that 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 has a degree and a good job and a, a good house a good car guys they they're looking primarily for youth and beauty because they want someone to have a family with and and, and uh, by the time women get to you know the point where they have all the stuff they look for in men they've lost their youth and beauty and they wonder like oh i'm such a catch why won't why don't any guys want me it's like well what 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 do you have to offer them oh well i got a house a car a degree like i have all that myself i don't need an i don't need a duplicate <laughs> like why what, what what do you have to offer me like they, it's nothing like they, they don't have anything guys are looking for yep absolutely and there's also just the the, the standards themselves as well. Uh, like there are so many YouTube videos uh, where they look at clips of women talking about their their standard for a man, for a man, and it's usually like somebody in their twenties who earns a million dollars a year. It's like oh, that's about zero point three percent of the population. Yep. Yeah, well, that's another thing we we offer, often cover is that uh, the, the type of like was it the six 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 men that a lot of these women look for. Like six feet tall, six figure salary, six pack abs, six inch penis. That, that's like <laughs> like three percent of the population or something of the male population fits all that criteria. 
And they're and, and currently so banging the... women far hotter than Anita Sarkeesian, I'm afraid to say. Yes, exactly. Uh, and that that is that is the point I make whenever I see like one of these like career women. You know, they're like 40 years old and they 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 own their own company and whatnot and they can't get a man because like they're if a woman makes a hundred thousand a year, a man has to make at least three hundred thousand for her to be interested in him. And then if you look at the guys that make three hundred thousand a year, they have access to way better women than her. Yeah, she's gonna be alone. Like that that's inevitable. Like the, the types of guys that you are are shooting for. Heresies have way better women than you answer. available to them. Like, you have no chance. I found a, a thumbnail picture here that perfectly illustrates the situation. Where here you have a, uh, not uncute, but clearly all oversized, shall we say, a blonde woman. I'm like, oh yes, we need to raise the standard for what men we look for. There, I remember an article a while ago where it was why obese women don't need to settle for obese men and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I covered a, a similar article years ago. How uh, all, all these women that demand that uh, th these obese women that demand that like Brad Pitt physique dudes like them, they are not attracted to obese Here's men. The question. Fire is the like, yeah, that's one of the first videos on my channel. I think I actually titled it like you, you, you don't get to decide what other people are attracted to. Like, I think that's the root of the problem. Like these idiots legitimately believe that that they could decide what other people find attractive. Like they, they believe you can train guys to like land whales. Like, no, the best you could do is train guys to not, uh, like, to, to suppress their gag reflex whenever they see <laughs> a land whale, but they, they can't be trained into preferring one. <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. Yeah, and, and sadly, they, they, man, like, this is the danger of echo chambers, too. Question. Like, um... Uh, I, I've answer. seen this play out where, where even like uh, maybe Twitter's not as bad as it used to be in this regard. But uh, they, a lot of these terminally online idiots, they they spend all their time in in on a answer. site like Twitter where anyone who disagrees with them gets banned. So they they're not allowed to hear any other opinions. And eventually they drink their own Kool-Aid and they start believing the lie that quote-unquote everyone agrees with them. Then they get out into the real world and they see what, uh, what uh, like one of their pet uh, causes gets put up to a popular vote and it loses like 80 to 20 percent. And, and that just destroys their world because they're like, oh, God, like in my echo chamber, 100 percent of people agreed with this. Something's wrong with this world. How are there so many alt-right Nazi bigots out there? Yep. That is absolutely a problem. And OK, to bring this back to Warner Brothers again, I'm, I, you saw the one where they said they were moving to... Uh, to mobile devices, right? Because this ties in yeah. perfectly with this. Yeah. Good luck competing with the games like Nikkei and uh, Blue Archive. Yeah. You you are going to take like a, a current year Harley Quinn who looks at her old sexy suit and so Suicide Squad and goes, "No, I want something more modern," and covers up like a burka. And you're going to take that up up against the most competitive market in entertainment right now, where Every game is trying to make the biggest titted, the most massive ass, hottest women you can find competing for like 3% of the top market share. Yeah, I, it's, it's not going to happen. And, <laughs> and, and you know, I, I, I'm actually, you know, my opinion on gotcha games has completely shifted as time went on. Like I, I used to be, I used to be against them because, mm. like, again, I, I'm I'm not in favor of predatory monetization. But I I have in recent years, like, especially when I saw like how Nikkei started off, and then when they started doing surveys and whatnot, and how they changed over the over the past year, I, I I've really adjusted my opinion there because um, the the one advantage Gotcha games have that mo that n almost no other type of game does is that you got the best feedback on what your customers actually want. Like when you sell your game piecemeal, like one character or one outfit at a time, 
you have the best feedback on what your paying customers are, they, what they actually want. Because like, one of the biggest complaints us gamers have had for years is like, so some niche Japanese game is coming to the West. Everyone celebrates. It gets censored. No one buys it because it's censored. And the, the lesson that the, that the, the lying lol cowizers take back to Japan is, see, we told you there's no market for this in the West. <laughs> and they yep. they believe it, but uh, but with something like like, like uh, imagine a game like Nike, I, I would love to see one of these gacha games do an experiment like this where, where they they make like a purposely like Western designed character, and 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 uh, and do like a double banner with uh, with the, the the Western style character like you no know, uh, all the diversity check boxes checked. And uh, and put 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 that up with uh, with like one of the one of like and with like honest there from from Nikkei, yeah. You know, put her up against a sexy waifu and see who sells more. Uh, th that should drive the point home because like uh, yeah, when when these gotcha games put out a new character and nobody buys that character, they have to they, they have to look into it. Like wh okay, why doesn't anyone like this character? Like they, they can't deflect and say like, oh, maybe they don't like the developer, so they didn't support. The like there's all these different excuses they always had when mm -hmm. they're trying to deflect the real reason, but they, they can't do that. If if they're selling you one character at a time, they, they like it's either because the design of the character was shit and no one liked it, or the character mechanically was so bad that it, it, even those that rolled just on the design only rolled for one copy and they were happy with that. Like, like they, they actually have to look into it. Like, or, or if they release an, a different character and all of a sudden that character sells double what their previous bestseller was, okay, our audience wants more of this. And my ultimate dream at some point, like I know this is a pipe dream, but you know we, we, we got to have some dreams to keep us going. Imagine one day, one of these developers sitting in their office, drinking their seventh cup of coffee, just sits there and goes, hey, wait a minute. These big titty anime waifus make us billions of dollars in the gotcha space. What if we tried to put them in a regular game? Wow. What if? <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Like, well, wow, what if instead of going for ESG shit nobody wants in our regular games, we went with the hot anime waifus? Well, no, 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 that's, that's just, that's too crazy. That would never work. I guess the, the big, like, test for this is going to be Stella Blade. Because Stella Blade is already producing quite a lot of waves. The, the issue is, though... I, PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. PlayStation. They, they, like Yeah, that, that's they 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 did so good just to trip right in front of the finish line. Like the my 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 opinion is the best thing that could happen is it's a complete bomb on PlayStation like Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth appears to be so far. And, and then it when it comes to PC, it it sells like 10 million plus. Like that that would be my ideal outcome. Because like the developers need to know, like you, 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 you do not tie yourself to to the brand known for censorship, like like no that even if the game and plus even if the game is uncensored, I am never buying another PlayStation again. Like I, I don't care what you put out on it, I'm done with PlayStation. Now if you put it out on PC, I'll probably pick it up. But if it stays PlayStation exclusive, well I guess I'll I'll could live without playing it then. And, and uh, m most people share my attitude. Like, I don't know of a single person who's, who doesn't already have a PS5 that's going to go out and buy a PS5 for it. Because I, I legitimately believe the era of the system seller is dead. And, and uh, like, cause remember, like, back in, in the OG Xbox, like, literally tens of millions of people bought that just for Halo. Like, you, you don't see that anymore. Like nowadays, uh, like the the people that already have that console, if they're interested in the game, they'll buy it. But it's not going to get any new sales of the console just to buy one game. <laughs> like that's and part of the reason too is like, uh, Halo was relevant for years. Yep. Like, like uh, I think at least five years or so. Like like Halo, uh, even when Halo Two came out, the OG Halo was still relevant. Nowadays. Even the biggest name games, like uh, they, they, I think the last 
big name game that stayed relevant, you know, for, for ages. I mean, GTA five still relevant, uh, uh, Skyrim still relevant fallout, uh, fallout still relevant. Starfield is already irrelevant, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, so, so there's still there's a rare few, but but all the games that stay relevant for more than like a month, they're they're all multi platform anyway. So so yeah, like uh, uh, even Stellar Blade, I think like it, it's gonna it, it's gonna come out, it's gonna make waves for like a month, and then just like every other game, like no, no one's gonna talk about it again until it comes out on PC. And then you'll have like a second wave hype cycle. And then uh, after like a month, that's going to die down again because like that's just how social media works now. And, uh, there's so much stuff being released and all the streamers and all the influencers, I hate that word, uh, they, they, they just move on to the next big thing. So like, you know, you, you, you could have the, like, even Baldur's Gate 3, it's still somewhat relevant, but it's, it's vastly waning compared to where it was a few months ago. Because it's just, it's old news now. Everyone's moving on to something else. And, and in an environment like that, you, you literally, like, there's, you have no reason. Like, why would you spend $500 to buy some unwanted piece of hardware just to play a game that everyone's gonna, like, no one's going to talk about again in, in like the next three weeks? Yep. Like, it's a completely different environment now. It's just... And you say as well, like the economy, you buy a piece of hardware, it costs loads, and then you're going to buy a game on it. Like, uh, even hot chicks is just not enough for that, especially also yeah. because you know that if you simply just chill out and wait six months to a year, it's going to come to PC anyway. Yep, and even if it doesn't, like, so I, I've, I have a wait six months policy now with the vast majority of games, and and uh, I, uh, man, I, I told people on my channel that saved me like so many times. Not just because it saves me from giving money to a game that gets censored after the fact, or that they they add microtransactions after the fact, like you know, all the ways they could fuck up a game, doesn't just save me from that. It saves me from the hype cycle. It's happened so many times that I put a game on my wish list. Oh, I'm going to wait six months, see if I see how it turns out. I'll wait for all the bugs to be fixed. I'll see if they fucked it Service up. Service guarantees citizenship. And six months later, the game is actually still good. They haven't fucked it up. It's great. So I'm going to buy it, right? No, because I just don't care anymore. <laughs> like So many games I found out, like, I just didn't care about it six months later. Like, I don't even want to play it now. I just realized I don't know how much time and money I saved. So I, I, we're we're going to be seeing a lot, or, or actually, even with something like Stellar Blades. Like, man, I um, I I I'm I would want to get that game, but like by the time it comes to PC, maybe I'm not going to care anymore. Like, it, so Nikkei has way more fan service than Stellar Blade does, and and I don't have to pay for it. Yep, like Nick. So, like it, 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 so the the game better be more than just fan service because I already have plenty of that from other sources. If it was on PC, I would buy Stella Blade just as a piece of activism. Practically, it's like okay, hot woman. Okay, fine. Even yeah, that, if I'd that, never that, played that it. That plus mods. That plus mods. Because yeah, you you know the mods are going to be great for that. Yes, but it's like again the. The choice of the PlayStation for a, for a game that was obviously designed from the bottom up to be tantalizing is... Yeah, they. <laughs> uh, no, let, let's just say however much money Sony paid them for exclusivity, it better have been a lot. It better have been a lot, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so they, they, were, they were all, uh, uh, they were trying to hype up that, oh, it's the like second most pre-ordered game on PlayStation behind MLB The Show. <laughs> that, that's more of an indication of how the market isn't really all that big right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, someone's chat says the Armored Core worth. Yeah, I, I actually, I just got the Armored Core 6. I I, I, I like that game. I legit enjoy that. And the Elden Ring was great too. So, so uh, like, I, I just said, no, I, I don't buy games. You know, I don't pre-order anymore, except for like, there's a few hentai games I pre-order or buy day one. If, if it's from a circle that I really like, if I see them put out a new game, I buy it immediately. But uh, outside of that, <laughs> um, like even with Elden Ring, I had no hype for Elden Ring at all. 
Heresies like I, 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 I and for a little while, I thought the game was in development hell, but it was actually just FromSoft doing the smart thing. Like they, they kind of went radio silent on the game. And then one day, oh, by the way, it's launching in three months. So th- that was a pretty good move on their part. I'll give it that. But uh, so, so uh, Elden Ring, I, I had no hype for. I, w- I was a wait and see on it. And I, I, I bring this up because this is my attitude with Dragon's Dogma 2 as well. I loved the first Dragon's Dogma, but I'm very skeptical of Crapcom. So I'm going to wait and see how it goes. It, it might end up like Elden Ring. So how did Elden Ring go? I didn't pre-order it. I didn't buy it day one. The question. Throughout Fire like the maybe answer. two or three weeks, I watched a few people stream the game. And watching other people play that game made me want to play. I was like, oh my God, this game legitimately looks good. So I picked it up and I, and I don't regret it. I enjoyed it. Like, th- th- I might do that with... Uh, I mean, if Dragon's Dogma 2 ends up being the hottest shit in years... Just because I don't have hype for it now doesn't mean I won't buy it. Like, if if it comes out... like I like what I'm seeing so far with the character creator. They're making all the right moves there. If the game itself is good and, and it doesn't have woke shit in it, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. If I, if I watch other people play it and it makes me want to play it myself... Like, see, that's, that's another thing. Like, you know, I think story-driven RPGs might be an exception. Because uh, you you almost have no reason to play it if you watch someone else play it already. Yep. But but there's a lot of games out there, like uh, it, like Elden Ring. I watched other people play the game, and it made me want to play. Like holy fuck, this game looks so fun. I want to play this game so bad. But like all all the latest Final Fantasy games. Like, watching people play puts me to fucking sleep. Like, the, the, the combat in this game just looks boring. It may, maybe it's more fun to play than it is to watch, but, you know, people, I, I watch people play Elden Ring, and I'm like, I want to play this. I watch someone play Final Fantasy, like, you no, know, ever since 15, and I'm just, eh. <laughs> like, nah, this, this, I really don't like what they did with the combat. And it does seem to be reflected in the sales, too. You sent me that the uh, the other day, that the sales for the remake are lower than expected. Yeah. And, and now that, uh, and I know someone in the chat's going to bring it up. So to be fair, the, the, the remake, I, I guess remake was part one, rebirth is part two. Remake launched on PS5 and PS4. Rebirth is only PS5. So it, it's so... Uh, that's the excuse a lot of people are using for why the sales are so low, but uh, I, I I present you this point as a counter. How long has the, P, has the PS... I mean, uh, Sony already said the PS5 is in the latter half of its life cycle. They're already ramping up to the PS6. And people still... No, the people that bought the PS4 version haven't bothered getting a PS5. <laughs> yeah, what what does that say? And and, and plus, uh, th- this is supposed to be a trilogy, I believe, or at least a trilogy. I don't know if they're planning on more, but there's going to be at least three games in this tril in, in this series. How, so I, I guess not that many people who got the game on PS4 thought it was worth getting a PS5 to continue it. Well, it doesn't or, e- or e- e- either that, or maybe they're just waiting for the PC version. But uh, uh, but you know what? I'll just I think I I I know what I think is a contributing factor. Like I, I really loved Final Fantasy VII. I know uh, there's a lot of people out there that'll scream that the game is overrated. Yeah, maybe by current year standards you could say that. But as someone who played Final Fantasy VII when it came out, it was revolutionary back then. Like man, I I loved that fucking game. And then, like, Remake just pulled a such a massive bait and switch. Like, they, the first, like, half the game was pretty much step by step, the, the OG story. And, and then they went, like, oh, multiverse. They went full multiverse with it and, and uh, going in a different direction. I think that's what turned off a lot of the so original fans, too. They're like, no, I, I just wanted a, 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 uh, for, uh, the OG Final Fantasy VII, but with updated graphics, combat, etc. But like the, the the story was good as so it was. You didn't need to change it. But that's not what they got. Like like man, like if if you're gonna change it, don't remake the original story. Like like how about this? How about make a game about Sephiroth when he was when he was getting started? 
or, or, or there's that game that was Japan only that was focused on the Turks. Like you, you could do other stories in that universe that, that before, after, even during, but from a different perspective without fucking up the original story. Why did they choose to do that? Like it, and especially like this is a game that most people consider a masterpiece. If you remake something that's considered a masterpiece, you're setting yourself up for failure. That very rarely ends well because expectations are sky high. And I, I don't think they met them, to be honest. Like from ev- I've, I've actually heard like the, the general breakdown is like a lot of people that n- either didn't play the OG Final Fantasy VII or they didn't like it all that much. They are enjoying the remake. But all the people who were fans of the original, or many of them, they, they don't really like it. So <laughs> should have just gone with a new one. Like, why'd you do that? The desire to bet on a sure thing. Yeah, I, 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 I should I should have known, yeah. yeah. It's, well, this is the biggest game we've ever released, and a remake is sure to get us a lot of sales. Yeah, I mean, not working out that well now, is it? Well, the issue is, if they just do the remake and then release it, then people would probably be happy. But they can't help themselves can they like we could just do that but we also could add a bit of a our spin to it this you see this in entertainment and television all the time where they take an established character and they could just do a simple story with that character and get away with it and earn money but they've always got to insert themselves into it they've always got to make it their story yeah and and Oh man, that 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 does concern me too, because I, I I know look uh, if if I was put in charge of, of uh, like say you know, as a fan of Final Fantasy VII, if I was put in charge of a Final Fantasy VII remake, I would have made Final Fantasy VII again, except with all updated graphics. May, maybe uh, like I I'd hire like the original composers and everything back to to like you no know, re-record some of the music tracks. I I, I would uh, like m- maybe I'd rework the combat a little bit. Yeah, you know, may, may uh, add extra content to the original game. I I'd, I maybe I'd do something like that. But leave everything else alone. All this story would stay as it was. Everything else would stay as it was. But yeah, then you got all these people. They're like they claim to be fans, but like you said, they want to they like they want to piss all over it and mark it as their territory. Yeah, they they want to make it their thing now. Yeah, and now it yeah. works out. Yeah, it's it, it's sad, but but no, like. That just shows they weren't really fans of the original to begin with. Or at the very least, not fans enough to do the correct thing and put their own opinions aside. Again, in a bygone age, when they made the Lord of the Rings movies, they specifically said that they had left everything of themselves out of it because they were here to tell the story of the Lord of the Rings, not the story of themselves. Which has been completely forgotten now completely well because n- now it's all about uh, using your platform to change the world For and if anyone disagrees and if anyone disagrees with you they're a nazi or or a pedophile or or a misogynist or whatever whatever take your pick like, and, and that's that that's another thing i find funny i'm sure you've noticed this with western designs too i, I one of the things that like i i, I really don't think the West can recover till they fix it. Like uh, even in censored Japanese games, they're still able to make their characters look good. Yeah, they're way too covered up, but they still look decent, if nothing else. Here in the West, though, they are so fucking scared of being called a pedophile by brain dead, terminally online trolls that they they make their twenty year old women look sixty. <laughs> like that. That is. Yeah, un- until they stop doing that, like I, I don't see them ever recovering. Fire sees the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it'll be a bit of a miracle. Like I don't think they have enough time. I think companies yeah. like Warner Brother and Disney will probably have to just die and maybe get bought up and turn something I, else. I, but 
that's what I'm hoping for. Like, I, I, I have absolutely no desire to save these old companies anymore. Like, I want them replaced by new ones. There's plenty of decent double A and indies out there that I would rather, like, I would rather they get all the money and, and maybe they could grow to replace these big corpos. Like, I'd prefer that to saving these big corpos. It would be nice. Uh, shall we do some super chats? I don't know how long you can hang around for today. Nah, nah. I mean, they, they, these are just people that support your stream. You don't need to read their super chats. Like, yeah, sure. No, I, I, I got, I got some time. It's okay. Yeah, great. Let's see. Uh, Alex Adamson asks, Arch, do you think in English or Norwegian? Surprisingly enough, mostly in English, honestly. You know, it's the language you use the most because, you know, Polish was my first language and I can force myself to think in Polish, but obviously I, I, I barely speak it anymore because, you know, it's been decades since I had to. So it's English all the way. Yeah, I think it's whatever the one you use the most. Yeah, I, I, I think in Norwegian, so if I'm in a Norwegian system. setting, like if I go to the store, I'll think in Norwegian because if I don't, I won't be able to speak Norwegian. <laughs> If, if called upon to do so. You know, if some, some weirdo just randomly starts speaking to you for no reason, then you just have to stare at them for a few seconds to discern what they're actually doing. Like, why are you... Why are you speaking at me? I, I thought we evolved past the point of being friendly with strangers. What the hell are you doing? Oh, not, not here. Not in Norway. Like, you're expected to partake in simplistic conversation with people that you hang around with for more than five seconds just to acknowledge that existence. This is expected of you. It is a social norm. Mm. <laughs> uh, Should be for the best. Zontar says 2,000 Abrams, 2,400 Bradleys, 4,300 M113s. And 288 tens in storage. YouTube wouldn't let me say what should be done with them, but you know, Arch. You know. I, I, I know what you're talking about, too. It's the whole Ukraine situation, huh? I mean, we should give them to yeah. Russia, even the odds a little bit. Hmm. Well, uh, if, it, if Ukraine goes anything Here's like Afghanistan question. did, we Fire will give them the to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Just very slowly. Uh, Zero says, made it, was getting bread, and thought I was late. Well, you are not. And he says, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Indeed, the whole South American world is unironically in mourning right now. Have you seen the diplomatic notes being generated, and, like sent to uh, Japanese embassies by the governments of like Mexico and stuff? Yeah, it's a, it's a major part of their culture down there. Like I, I think, uh, what was it? Uh, I was talking about this on my stream yesterday too. And one one guy, I think he's from Argentina, said that they're it's their third biggest religion behind Saint Seiya and soccer. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? But so at the same time. South America doesn't really have that much of a unifying, like, myth, does it? Like, what, the, the old-timey stuff? Like, Aztec, Maya There's shit? Like, they have no connection to that. Half of them are Spanish, <laughs> goddammit. Yeah, I mean, so, so if anything, Catholicism is the closest they got yeah. in soccer. But, uh, no, and then actually, you know, the, the, take, take away this white pill from that, too. Like whenever, like I, I see so many alarmists. Uh, when whenever some anime industry insider points out that like over fifty percent of anime income is coming from outside of Japan nowadays, that doesn't mean woke Western companies. That also includes South America. That includes other Asian countries. Like it, it's still concerning that the West has more and more of a say in censoring anime, but um. You know, actually, best white pill I've seen in ages. Like, thanks to the success of shows like Interspecies Reviewers and Immoral Guild and Redo of Healer and, and uh, others along that vein, I've been noticing uh, 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 Japan still has a long way to go to fix their video game landscape, but anime is healing. Like, ev every season, as time goes by, 
I think they they learned from the success of those shows I just mentioned, and like you know, panty shots and titties are making a comeback. Like there's more and more of them every season. Like wow, you're remembering what makes you money, huh? Impressive. <laughs> well, don't uh, don't get too excited yet. Their their political landscape is beginning to resemble ours ten years ago. We'll see if they manage to learn the lessons. Well, my, my hope is if Japan were to fall, they're probably going to fall right uh, right when we're recovering. Yep. So so may, maybe, like, I, I, know, uh, I don't know, are you working on a game too? I, I know Kibbs is. I don't know if you got any projects planned, but uh, may, may, maybe keep, keep open the possibility of being able to poach some of that Japanese talent. Yep. I'm actually working on a game setting along with Sargon. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> so maybe, maybe. Let's see, cooking apple says dragon milk fund. Yeah. I am best confused. Milk. Dragon fund. Uh, is, is this something you know no, about? No, that's there. We, we got a beer here called dragon's milk, and uh, and then it also has a, du a dual meaning because you know, I. Yeah, uh, this going way back years ago to that one E three. Remember when when Bethesda like couldn't shut the fuck up about how their game has dragons. <laughs> so yes. so I I started putting dragon girls in all my streams, and a lot of them have big milkers. So ah. that's where dragons milk comes from. I Google dragon milk, and there's coffee, chocolate, oatmeal, cookie, s'mores. What the. F yeah, so they they got a regular stout, but uh, all all the breweries here in America, like they they have their seasonal flavors, but th th those aren't the normal ones. Baked apple pie. I'm half curious as to what baked apple pie tastes like in alcohol form. Oh well, that's uh, certainly something. Uh, Luke Jones, been a member for 14 months. Thank you very much for your continued support, sir. Nice to catch you alive for once. Keep it up. Do you think I should learn Norwegian or Japanese to escape decaying UK when the time comes? Lol. He also gives five so Archcast memberships. Yeah, so so l let me answer that, too. Uh, I think you'd be better off just moving to another English-speaking country. Like like Singapore is an English-speaking country. I uh, was uh, Belize and even Panama in, in South America. You could get away with only speaking English. Like, there's... There's plenty of decent places you can move to in the world where they where you don't even have to learn another language like that. that if, if all you're interested in is escaping your Nazi shithole, like you, you don't even need to learn another language. <laughs> Unironically, though, it's like when you say that, you're not even joking. Like England has more restrictive laws than like the Russia half the time at this yeah. point. My well, God. Yeah. Oh man. Like I. I <sighs> I I'll I'll send you the link. Like I I I found, I, I uh, found something on Twitter earlier, uh, and I think it'll be no. Instead of me saying something, it's only a minute long. I think it might be worth playing it. So I'm just gonna post it in the Discord link channel here. Just just something to think about before you call Russia. Like no, the the um, you you talk about how evil they are. Right. I mean, not saying they're good. I'm just saying, you know, like the U.S. government uses China as a boogeyman while they're doing the same things, if not worse. Yeah, U.K. does the same thing with Russia. We'll have a look at it. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? <laughs> arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. What sort of things get you well, arrested? Well, one example I give in my show is uh, there was a young woman from Liverpool uh, called Chelsea Russell, and people can look this up. Uh, her friend was killed in a car crash, a 19-year-old woman, and she posted the lyrics of his favorite song on her Instagram. And there was a rap song, so the lyrics contained several instances of the N-word. She was arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, given 500 hours of community service and a fine, the question. tagged, Fire is the answer. and for a year she was under 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew. My goodness. In Britain. 3,300 people arrested in Britain. And this isn't all the clip, too, because I remember so the uh, example he brings up there. So, yeah, yeah, I think this, this clip was from, like, a 2020 or 2021. 
So imagine how much worse it is now. Yep. Like, we used to be able to look to Russia and the rest of the world and go like, yeah, we're free, not like you. Now, <laughs> not quite so yep. much. Or, or, or even, like, dude, the, 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 there's unfortunately a lot of brainwashed people out there that still believe that. Because sometimes, like, one of the points I like to make is that China gives us more of what we want than our own companies do. They like, well, but, but China censors. Okay, just shut up and think about this. All these like ten cent owned mobile games, yes, they're censored in China, but the the Japanese version, the global version, they're not censored <laughs> because China just wants to make money. Like so, the, the Chinese government, uh, as as well as it's run. It needs a constant influx of money to, to keep itself from collapsing. Like, all China wants is your money. China, Chinese companies are willing to give us what we want, so we give them our money. You remember how things used to be? Remember, like, that used to just be business? The companies were like, what do we have to do to get you to give us your money? Okay, we'll, we'll give that to you. So then they gave us what we wanted. We gave them our money. Uh, China's one of the few countries out there whose businesses still routinely do that, at, at least overseas. Like, I will admit they're censored within China, but not outside of China. Like, look at, uh, look at like, Azure Lane, for example. That's a Chinese game. Yeah, it's censored in China, but outside of China? No, no, we, we, we got all the goods, man. And, and all I do is point that out. And there's, oh, you're a shill for China. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> just you, know, you, you get the industry and government you deserve, man. If if you're not even willing to see the truth. <sighs> to uh, to answer the question that has started all of this too, um, don't learn Norwegian. Norway is <laughs> worse and far more expensive. So go to Japan, <laughs> and you can you can earn quite a bit of money in Japan too, just from being able to speak English. And it's like, yep, yeah, I will teach your retarded child to speak Englishu. Even if you can't, even if you can't speak English yourself, you'll speak English better than they will. Uh, Glowy says, "Figured out what the feminist plan actually is, based on how they want to make all sex illegal and women like struggle snuggle stories. Obviously, the feminists want rape to be the main form of courtship, really exposing themselves by calling everything rape." Oh. <laughs> well, uh, struggle snuggle is the only way feminists are ever going to get laid, so. We're going to go back to the Stone Makes Age. Sense. Well, um, I mean, it'll have health benefits for men, too, because now you got to get real fit so you're able to pin them down for long periods of time, I guess. Hunt them down, chase them down. Yeah. Well. Feels a little bit like, uh, like converting to Nazism for the health programs, but hey, it's a step in the right direction. Evil Potato says, Art, what do you think of the old world rules, especially around the new way they're doing magic? They seem to have just bastardized and dumbed down the magic, removed its uniqueness, and made it 40k psychic powers. The yes, I would agree. Fire I'm not a fan of how they did magic. I think they overcomplicate the qualific qualifiers of it, uh, with all of the various little schools and stuff that you now have to do in the shooting phase. And they made it just another shooting attack. Not a fan. Uh, the old world rules look okay, by and large, but... I think they added in too much weird bloat whilst not taking out what needed to be taken out. So, we'll see. Are, are you talking about the, the new tabletop rules, or is it an, or, or is this a video game I'm not aware yep. of? Where I'm a fantasy is okay. making a return. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Zero Firewater says, RG, thank you for doing the collab with Archley and introducing me to his content. I try. Try our best. Uh, zero cornered rat. Art starts to sweat. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, PSU, have you heard that Ghost of Tsushima comes to Steam? And why have I heard that Discord plan to add Keylogger to Discord? Well, first, yes, and I'm looking forward to it. And two, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, they're also already talking about having AI spy on every single chat as well. So, I mean, I don't even know if they need a keylogger at this point. I mean, they, we, we got to reach a point in society where you cannot <laughs> type the N-word in any context. Not even to your friends. Not even to any extent. We, we got to 
really bore down here and make the wrong thing. Yeah, wrong I, I, oddly enough, th this th this may seem like a stretch at first, but what you just said, that's why the Bud Light boycott was as successful as it was. Mm -hmm. Most boycotts end up failing because they're online only, and they get quickly shut down. The, no, the, the people that own the platforms just either delete, ban, or hide all discussion of it, and it quickly dies down. You can't do that with something like beer, which is like mostly drank in social settings in person. That's a good point. Pe yeah. People were spreading the word about what Bud Light did in person at bars, at sporting events. You know, someone who had no idea what was going on bought a Bud Light, and then one of their friends was like, "Oh, hey, so when's your bottom surgery?" <laughs> yep, and, and that started strange. the discussion, like no, outside of a realm where where anything could be censored. We we might have to go back to that. We might actually have to go back to more in person communication. Yep. Uh, Mark DeShane, Rumble Super Chat Test. Well, it worked. For now. Uh, Warblade, this time they have very shit luck, uh, cry more NPCs. Heresy I'm sure they the will. Question. In fact, I'm convinced of it. <laughs> uh, Zero, Monty Om was a Ruby. I, I know next to nothing about Ruby. I watched one episode, thought it was cringe. Never watched it again. Uh, Trintovoy, hey Art, out of curiosity, you seen the Invicta Warhammer Law vids, breaking down the Ultramarine chapter and now a Tyranid Force one. I have not. I watch virtually no YouTube these days. Too busy making my own YouTube. Uh, Maximum P seen 117 P. Praise be Space King. You see the vidiot arch? I have. I have seen it finally. And it also says Re Ruby dropped off after volume 3 and RT nearly bankrupted themselves, which is I'm guessing, making Gene Lock look at the voice cast they hide, that price tag on that show. Yeah, I heard about Gene yeah. Lock, where they <laughs> apparently got like some really high profile people. Yeah, so, so Genlock was the personal project of one of their higher-ups, which is the only reason it got another season. But yeah, G G Genlock lost him a lot of money, that's true. Let's see here. Uh, see if I can find it. Genlock. Michael B. Jordan, yep. Mace, that's the chick from Game of Thrones, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Koichi Yamada. Yeah, that doesn't look uh, cheap. Jesus, okay, yeah. They, uh, they, they certainly went all out and blew a lot of money for something that never caught on, yeah. Well, yeah, so, so they remember how we were talking about with the Western comic industry, how they keep trying to force characters to be popular. Like th that's what they tried with Genlock as well. And it, it went about as well as you'd expect. Uh, Obdulio Noruma Noruma is in charge of Final Plan 7, the creator of Kingdom Hearts. He loves convoluted stories of time travel and multiverses. Oh, that explains that. Not every yeah, the, not everything needs a multiverse. I just want to point that out. It seems to be a lesson lost on people. Well, when you're a one-trick pony and that's all you do, though, <laughs> everything needs it. So Firewater asks, is Norway full of narcissistic extroverts or something, Ashley? Uh, no, not really. We are actually a very insular people. Uh, but our insularness is accented with our need to appear polite as well in that almost Britishy way. So you're almost like Japan in that sense, huh? Yes, it kind of is. Like, you say hello and then you never register that person's existence, basically. It's just like an automatic reflex. Well, uh, for what it's worth, it's the same here in the U.S. Like, just, it... it, it you, you When you're greeting someone, you probably, you always ask how they're doing. And you always respond with fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. When, whenever someone actually goes into their their, their uh, life, their, their tragic life story, like that's like, oh, okay, I got other shit to do. Keep talking. I'm leaving though. 
Yep, you know when you've stepped on the landmines, well, how are you doing? Oh, well, you know, wives bitching, my back's aching. Like, oh, God, we're in for a story. Uh, P.I. says, what's up with this dude's accent? He French? Are you French, Archie? Okay, you know what? That is probably the most insulting thing anyone's ever said to me, man. <laughs> how, how, how dare you? How dare you? No, I'm just a redneck. Uh, Subject Noble. There's an article where Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator of Gundam, talked about the anime industry that will fall if they keep emulating Disney quality. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, hell, even even Gundam learned this lesson quite recently, where um, with that Witch from Witch Mercury from show, yeah, yeah w- where they tried to make it into like a kid's show again. It's like, that's weird. No, I mean, it, I actually watched it. it. It wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Like, it, it was def. It was far from the best Gundam ever made, but uh, it it wasn't horrible. It wasn't. It just to me, it it wasn't Gundam, and it wasn't Yuri, which kind of left me disappointed on both regards. Like, but yeah, the, one if, 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 if they had gone more in, you know, if they had gone more in that direction, I would have been happy. But yeah, when it comes to Tomino, though, like just just take take in this case, he's right. But um, I I could not watch the last gun. I think the last Gundam he did was Reconquista in G. I think it was. Oh. I could only get like four episodes in, and I was like, "What Parachute is this? <laughs> what is the, what the fuck?" Like, I was so hyped. Oh, the original creator himself is coming back to make another show. Like, okay, stay retired. <laughs> Don't fuck up your legacy anymore. <laughs> I remember Reconquista because I had the exact same thing where I was watching it, and I. I, I, I checked the episode numbers on multiple occasions. Like, I must have missed an episode. What the fuck is going on? It was one of the weirdest shows I think I've ever seen where, like, nothing... I, there's nothing keeping it together. It's, it's like you're watching an anthology of various Paris shows, but it all has the same Fire character. The <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's one of the few shows that, I mean, no, I even if a show is somewhat bad, I usually find something to enjoy. Like I rarely drop shows after I started them. Like that's one of the few. Like I, I could not be bothered to keep watching it. It was it was a mess. Uh, Chichi Chichai Tomato. There was an injustice animated movie in twenty twenty one. Was there? To be fair, the the DC animated movies department has actually not done a bad job. They did um, Red Sun, uh, that was fairly good. They've done the War of the Worlds style one with the like bipedal mech thingies. Most of the DC animated movies have been quite okay. Mm. I yeah, wonder why I, they I, can't I, do I, that I, in live action formats. No, I. I uh... I used to watch all of the shows they did, like, like Batman the Animated Series, Teen Titans, Justice League Unlimited. Like the, I, I thoroughly enjoyed those, but I think you know, nowadays, like I haven't watched any of the movies just because I, I lost all interest in those characters, to be honest. Uh-huh. But uh, if, if the movies are good, I mean, for those of you who still care about DC characters, I'm glad you at least get some good content. And you don't have to go back 20 years to get it. Uh, Marksman 117B, a power world made by 10 guys, expanded, expanded to 40 developers. 10 dudes. Jesus. Now, now, if they don't blow all their money on server hosting, they're all millionaires. Yep. Uh, Zero, I honestly wonder how story has got so bad. Chrono Trigger was not that long ago. KOTOR 2 wasn't even finished. And it has one of the best Star Wars stories. <sighs> Lack of inspiration and lack of care. And also the fact that back then, storytelling in games and stuff was... Like, you only got into this if you were goddamn passionate. Like, this wasn't popular or anything. Like, you had to work hard to get into this industry. Yeah, there's also sabotage, too. I I know this this is still on Star Wars, not on gaming, though. But uh, 
uh, WW Pro did a did a great stream recently about how Mandalorian season four is likely canceled, and they they made a good point in that that stream that uh, John Favreau, for all his flaws, he still he has that passion. Still, you could tell he loves Star Wars. You could tell he wants to do Star Wars justice. When Kathleen Kennedy fired Gina Carano and fucked up all of Jon Favreau's future plans, that's when he gave up. Yeah, he, he just like, no, you know what? Fuck it. I, I'm not even going to try anymore. And I don't blame him. I, I'd probably do the same thing. If I was entrusted with, with some brand, some IP, and I really cared about it, and I wanted to do it justice, and every time I tried to do something right, management kneecapped me, I'd, I'd give up too. Yep. As in a final water, next stream that RG comes on, invite Kirisha. It will probably be a great stream. Very likely. I am being asked a lot to do a stream with the two of you, so sometimes... Hey, that's why. No, you're one of the few people that whose streams I can actually make, because like almost everyone else who asks me to come on their stream, they stream at the exact same time I do. Yep. <laughs> like, oh man, that's making. But but you know, Saturdays I use them. Actually, I'm supposed to be working right now, but no, I, I'll 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 just not sleep later. Saturdays I can make time. <laughs> sleep is for the weak. It's true. Uh, peasant thoughts. Golden Eagle sounds is lacking a lot in relation to for Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII does have a sequel and prequel they call Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core and Dirge of Cerberus. Final Fantasy... See, uh, it's, you know, that's, that, that's, that's absolutely true. And that's what they should have... They should have done more things like that instead of Rebirth or uh, Remake slash Rebirth. If they were going to go back to the OG Final Fantasy VII story, they should have left the fucking story alone. Like, may Maybe add extra content to flesh out some of the side characters and side stories, but leave the core story alone. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, then, then they, they should have done more things like Dirge of Cerebrus and Crisis Core. Like, that would have been, that would have gone over way better. New stories, additive content, rather than... Uh subtractive content exactly Lord Metalman anyone surprised that the Guardian newspaper wrote an article on GameGate 2.0 and defending Sweet Baby Inc and was written by ex Kotako journalists not in the slightest the only thing that surprised me is it took it, it took them this long to do so yeah, and what surprised me is what I mentioned earlier, that when the normies read that about that in The Guardian, their main reaction was, oh, that's why our games have been so shit lately. I finally understand. Yeah, it's way different. Because in, in back in the OG Gamergate, they were still ignorant and stupid. Like, oh, I can't believe those evil neckbeards are attacking women for no reason. But, but nowadays, they seem to have the logical reaction. He also says, um, Lord of Metal Man, that is, spoke to my local comic store on the state of the industry. He confirmed the only comic so selling for him is Amazing Spider-Man and old reprints. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah I, I still laugh. I was at Dan, when Dan DiDio was still at DC. You know, it, it was at one of the retailer summits they did, like where he he was caught basically showing his frustration. Like, I can't understand why uh, all of our best-selling books are reprints of our old content. And 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 then uh, like this is the same guy who's at a company that's all about uh, the like oh, oh yeah we we're making this for a modern audience so oh, we don't do offensive things like we used to back in the day like they, they try to distance themselves from their old content and then their old content is all that sells and they have to square that circle. Well, it's the problem that Disney is in right now, uh, where. They can't make anything new. They, they try, and they fail, and they're just sitting there looking at their parks, the only thing that makes money, basically as enormous, simple celebrations of nostalgia. It's... Basically all the old stuff there that they distanced themselves from, yes. Yeah, yeah. it's like, why it's do people sad. love all of these things that we hate now? Oh, who knows? Who knows indeed? It's a mystery. Yeah. 
and, and they uh, they're they're stuck now, I guess, because now, even if they wa- legitimately wanted to turn it around, they already chased away their their best content. Like, actually, you know, we were on Warner. Uh, so did, did you catch that uh, that article from like two days ago? Where Warner's DEI officer basically said that, uh, oh yeah, it's it's perfectly fine if you make things insufferable for people who don't buy into the DEI ideology. You know, they'll leave on their own, which is a good thing. Then yeah, except most of those people leaving, like remember how I said that you know, on a team of like thirty people, only three to five did any actual work. Those three to five are the people that are leaving. You dumb pieces of shit. <laughs> Like, okay, yeah, it's a good thing they're leaving. It's good for us, good for your competition, or people who want to eventually become your competition. Yep. Uh, Anthony Norwood, another big problem with the West comic industry is that they have been taken over by the woke. Yes. And when they make new heroes, they make ones like Snowflake and Safe Space. Oh, God, I remember those. Yeah. Man, I am actually so pissed at my own side for all the memeing they did on that because we're never going to get to see it now. Like, uh, my, my hope is maybe at some point in the future, some based insider is going to leak it because I know that comic got finished, but they, they were memed on so hard they canceled it. Like, I, I want, like, th- th- that would have been gloriously bad. I would have wanted to see it, <laughs> but not, we're not going to get a chance to. The thing is, too. They, 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 they literally know what sells, but they refuse to do it. My, mostly because of work political reasons. Like, look at one of um, p- probably the one standout character I can remember in recent memory that was like a big hit from a superhero was probably Spider Gwen. And what is Spider Gwen? She is a blonde hot chick in a tight sitting suit that moves very graciously and femininely. Like, wow, I wonder why this was a success and why Kamala Khan was not. But she could make her hands big. Don't, don't, don't girls all want that? Oh, God, she can make her hands big and manly. That's a fantastic soup bow. I think I'll take the woman who kills people with her thighs instead. It's... Again, like, see, this is the thing. Part of um, the reason why everything is so shit is absolutely money, because it was easier just to get ESG money rather than make something that sells. But it was also definitely wokeism nonsense, like ideological indoctrination. Because that's the only nope. reason you can see an obvious character that sells and then just ignore that for 10 years. Yeah. Kind of like what Squeenix did. Uh, you know, if Squeenix was smart, we would have had like three near Automata sequels by now. Yep. But no, they're, they're not smart. So, so here we go. Here we are. Stephen Hunt says we should call it AARP gaming instead. ARP gaming. <laughs> ah, yeah, yes. you, know, you, know what, you know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. So here in the in the U.S., that's American Association of Retired Persons. It's pretty much the. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's like whenever whenever you get to like sixty, they keep spamming you with uh, oh no jo- to join their health insurance plan and whatnot. You, you, they were calling you old. Nah. Well, that's good. Uh, that Reeve guy says, "Hail Gaben." Yes, hail Gaben. Like we need to put his brain in a jar and preserve it. Like it's very important. I swear to God, the day I wake up and there's a newspaper article like Gabe Newell died of a heart attack this morning, I am going to fucking panic. No, oh. no RJ, you know, if, if you're working on, on a game, like, I, uh, I, I, so, so what you're working on with Sargon, that's more for tabletop, right? Uh, tabletop okay, but, but, as a uh, setting okay. initially, and then we'll move it over to okay. a game adaption. Yes, sir. So that's that's when it's going to happen. Like like two days before you release your game on Steam is when Gabe is going to have a heart attack. And then the day before you found out that, hey, I know we approved everything, but now you're banned. Yeah, so there's a new boss in town. He's he's yeasted about 75%. It'll be a fucking Pornhub moment. You remember that when Pornhub had to wipe like 80% of their content because of nebulous lawsuits and stuff? Yep, and, and and that that's why it's so important to stay under the radar. Now they only got targeted because they were the big one, but uh, what everyone moved on to like X Hamster and and others like that afterwards. Yep. 
Mock to shame says, uh, <laughs> Fotaku. Why are you being so mean to Dev? Poor Dev. Dev is friend shaped, even if he's a little retarded. Uh, so John says, can't wait for Sony to drop the PlayStation X like Sega did with the Dreamcast. Oh, surely, surely we must be done with consoles soon. Like, come on, they're just a PC in your living room. Like, come on, can, can we not yeah. stop? Yeah, I, I've been saying that the, ever since, I think the, the PS2 generation, that's the last generation of consoles that needed to exist. Every console after that, they, they went away from just a plug and play game console. Uh, although technically the PS2 was the first step towards that anyway. Like, yeah, they went to, oh, well, we got, we're going to be the multimedia device. So you're going to be a PC. Yeah. You're not going to win this fight. Like, you can't outcompete a PC by releasing a lockdown walled garden. And yeah, it's going as as expected. Yeah, like now and one except that one of the reasons Nintendo is popular. It's not just because they made a, their console offers something none of the others do, which is mobility. It, it's also because like with the Switch, you plug the cartridge in the fucking game and you can play the game. Yep. It's like consoles need to need need to die. Uh, they the the so, so as they I, filled just don't exist anymore. Yeah, well, the only people playing consoles. I, mean, I I don't. I think I I in in my extended group of contacts, I think I only know like maybe three guys who have kids that play consoles. The consoles are mostly bought by people our age and older. Like it's it's just nostalgic old people. Yep. Younger people don't play on console anymore. Or if they like do, they it's a Switch or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think in the future, like the, I know these these companies' end goal is Stadia. Like that's what they all want. Yes. So so in the future, a, a quote unquote console is just going to be an app on a smart TV. Yep. And it's always going to be awful. Like, the technology is just... It's not there now. It's not going to be there in 10 years. And you know, even if we did have the technology to transfer lag-free interactive experiences over the internet, they'd add on so many spam filters or word checks or key loggers that it would still be like half a second to a second delay. Like, just, oh. Yep, exactly. And and, and that's why, you know, sing, single player offline is is always going to be where it's at. Uh, Door Life Dan, Hail Arch, and RG. Can't wait for more Blade Devil. I should put that. Hey, it's coming. Screen, actually. Uh, Mr. J, welcome, RG. As someone who never have read a comic in his life, I am perfectly happy with what I get from the East. <laughs> it's true. Well, but look at it this way too. Even if you if you don't read comics, like that's not the format for you. Look! Look at all the great anime we got. You could you could watch it instead, or a lot of times it's in video games for uh, video game form too. Like th that's one thing Japan still does well. Like th this this is another place where Western comics completely drops the ball. So in, in Japan, a new anime series or an anime movie comes out, and the sales of the manga like go up tenfold. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen here. Because here in the U.S., even if it's a good comic movie, people that are interested check out the comic store and they see the dog shit that's you know in current circulation and they just nope out. If these people were smart, that they would time the comic and the movie storylines a little bit better. Like they may, may, maybe do a re-release of of the better older comic storylines. I don't know, something like that. It's just, oh, Iron Man came out. Iron Man's the hottest shit ever. I want to go buy an Iron Man comic. And then you get Ironheart. Yeah. See, that's but, the problem. You go watch the Iron Man movie, and you're like, my God, this is awesome. And then you go into the store. It's like, wow, I want Iron Man. It's like, we don't have that. What do you mean you don't have that? We have his uh, black sidekick, though. I'm like, what? Who's that? Went, this. <laughs> Ironheart. It's like, oh, it's so retarded. Yeah. Japan even did Ironheart better. Uh, but please tell me you've seen it. I I have not, and I refuse. Oh. <laughs> and I no, wanna... no, 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 Japanese Ironheart is legitimately good. But I don't... It, it, it came out before the Western one. 
It, l- l- look it up, but don't don't do it on screen. You don't want to be sharing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so John says CD Projekt Red have been have bent the knee to BlackRock. They also burned out their programmers with The Witcher Three. I'm expecting GOG to pull a Google and go evil. Yeah, CD Projekt Red have just they've wasted so much of their goodwill, which they built up over years and then just squandered. Yeah, like I mean, why? So, so but when I, I, you you know when The Witcher hit it big, uh, every every major publisher was trying to buy them out. They yep. said no. They stayed independent. They became a major publisher in their own right. They, they, they went through all these steps to make sure they stay independent, only to bend down and suck the dick of ESG. Fuck them. Fuck CD Projekt Red. They, they, I, I, to, as far as I'm concerned, all the goodwill is gone. Like I, I don't think I'll ever buy in one of their games again. H King ninety. My biggest fear is having people try to make, make and popularize indie outlets, and then have the butt hurt corporations or the government crack down on it. Very possible. Very possible. I mean, if you have a monopoly, which they do, you don't want to give it up. Uh, while you hating, RT is dead. Time to salvage and sell off any good IP pieces. I mean, Rooster Teeth didn't even have that much in the end. Like, Ruby, maybe, Red vs. Blue. Like, what else did they uh, really yeah. have? No, the, the, only thing that they're, the only thing that Warner kept around is they, they... I forgot what its name was. They had this podcasting division that was yeah. apparently doing pretty well. They kept like, that's that. the only thing they... Yeah, they, they only kept that because they, they think they might be able to find a buyer for it. But they couldn't find a buyer for any of the other shit. Because, I mean, a podcast, like, okay, fairly low effort, doesn't require a whole lot of production, doesn't require a whole lot of people, probably does well enough on ad revenue and soup chance, etc., you know? Uh, Shadowfox23000, lol, if it wasn't for Japan, we wouldn't have gushing over magical girls, and my god, is that anime hilarious and a whole lot more lewd than the manga. Yeah. Uh, agree. No, and, and see, that's another thing I think Japan is learning. We, we we got multiple shows this season that that they actually they they show more than the manga did. This is what they need to do. Okay, so I- in general, if you already read the manga, you have no reason to watch the anime. Like the anime is more of a commercial for people that haven't read the manga already. But if you're a manga reader, the vast majority of anime you can skip. Because like it's it's almost always an inferior version of the manga, but if they add extra that wasn't in the manga to the anime without fucking like in this case like uh, there, there's plenty of scenes in the manga like where they got you know the the, the usual like God rays or steam or some something covering up a character's titties, mm-hmm. but they just don't have that in the anime. Like you can see nips. <laughs> like that, that's it was a simple change like that like they 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 just uh you know they just decensored it a bit now manga readers actually have a reason to check out the anime whereas previously they didn't it's fucking brilliant alex adamson i'll be watching the suicide squad anime because i want to see harley quinn be crazy i like crazy girls good man crazy girls best girls obviously we need more mentally insane females in the world very important because yeah, 99% isn't high enough. <laughs> yep. And they're crazy in the wrong way. We need more psychopaths. But because Shai Khan, they have been dying for years. How much longer? Well, same with the uh, the PC gaming outlets. It took them, what, 12 years to die? Like, Rooster it, Teeth it, was unprofitable for 10 years. This shit takes forever. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's like I said previously. Like as long as they're part of a parent company that that still makes money hand over fist. Now, I, I my my serious belief is Rooster Teeth was kept alive all this time because like that that was their write off. So if you're part of a big company and you want to get you know, a, a a government government money for having some ESG program. Your entire company doesn't have to to be ruined by ESG. Maybe you only force the ESG on some stupid shit you don't care about that's already unprofitable, and you're fine letting it operate at a loss because the money you get from the government grant is more. Like, there's, there's all kinds of shady shit like that going on. 
Like there, there's plenty of reasons why these unprofitable divisions are kept alive for decades. It can like, literally it's make, be a it's tax making writer. money in, in other ways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's making the money in other ways. Yeah, because if another part of your business is profitable, you can actually write off taxes on that profit against a company making a loss. Like this is why this shit can exist for, as we saw here, a decade before it goes under. Uh, Zero says, 90s movie with current film technology on my way. Now, unironically, Madam Web releases in like five years from now, and it's just Charlie's Angels, but good. It would, it would probably actually sell. Yeah, that, that, that's provided that uh, enough consumers are left that are ke- willing to keep giving these companies chances. Because I, I don't know if Disney can recover now. Because uh, like uh, every time, like remember, D- Dis- when you saw the Disney brand on something, that was a seal of quality. Of course, like yeah. oh, this this is this is going to be good. It's Disney. Now it's the opposite. Now yeah. everyone associates Disney with woke agenda pushing. So even if they put out something good, it, it might take a few weeks before it spools up and starts making money through word of mouth because everyone just automatically associates Disney with garbage now. Absolutely. Sentinel Rex been a member for one month. My question is, where are all the sexy women standing up to these freaks for the right to be sexy in films and gaming? They should be the loudest. Well, they're also a vanishingly small minority, and I imagine every time they open their mouths, a fat feminist looks looks at them, threatens to sit on them, and goes, don't you dare put your body privilege on me. You're exactly right. That's true. There, there, there are a lot of these sexy women who are unhappy. Like, think of every single model or grid girl or cheerleader who's lost her job over the years thanks to the feminists. Do you think they're happy to be out of work? No, but, but the, the feminists shut them the fuck down real quick whenever they complain about it. Yep. Because you're not allowed to talk about that. Uh, so John says, I remember one of her FF co-hosts, uh, I don't know, talking about after FF ended, she had to apply for a minimum wage jobs in shop stacking shelves, the ugly blonde one. I don't remember what this is in context. You know. There needs to be little little oh, that's, time oh, stamps. Fem, fem, no, no, that, that was Anita. That's oh, feminist yeah. frequency. Fem, yeah. Oh, yeah, now. I remember now, because... Um, you remember they made an anime picture of themselves. Oh, there, were, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that, that was one of my favorites, especially after they bitch about unrealistic depictions of women. <laughs> yeah, what? Try not doing that yourselves. Yep, because the anime picture, they look very good. They look very good indeed. And then you contrast that. There we go. With reality. Why, why would they do this? If they are so against tropes in video games, why would they do this? Yeah. No, I, I love how the one guy actually did a fix that for you version of that. Where, where, where <laughs> he, he redrew them more accurately. <laughs> it's so, so goddamn cringe. Oy. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. So, well, then again, you know, what can you expect from a woman who throws herself a, a birthday wedding? Uh, well, uh, well, let's just say when, when she hits 50 and she's still single and miserable, I hope she looks back at what she did and she thinks like, well, at least I owned those chuds in Gamergate. At least she did that. Nick... Corkidilus, as a dirty wog, here's my tribute to our Nordic lord. Thank you. Uh, Father Jack the Enlightened. All women have to offer is a baby-making hole, and the artificial womb is doing away with that. That's why they hate research going into it. I, okay. Yeah, it- that's why it's important for us to spin it as being a good thing for them. Like, hey, women, being pregnant sucks, right? Like, man, all, all, the, all the, the, the havoc it wreaks on your body and all, all, the, anno- all the annoyances it causes, all the, the health risks and things you can't do anymore. Wouldn't it be easier if, if after the guy impregnated you, they could just transplant the embryo into an artificial womb? And you, you could get nine months of your life back, ladies. 
All we got to do is work on our marketing. My pet theory is that we're within a decade of it being considered cringe to fuck other humans, okay? We're within 10 years of it being weird to have sex with humans. Just, just because... like AI girlfriends. Yes, exactly. Like, Because already the AI chatbots are getting disgustingly sophisticated, and once Gemini manages to unfuck its racial biases... <laughs> That's going to be everything all people talk to anymore. They're just going to have a little waifu on their phone, and that'll be it. Then we just need to figure out how to connect a flashlight to it, and make an artificial womb, and voila. Humanity yep. is <laughs> done. And, and, and see, that's that's the beauty of things like sex bots. Like, a, a, lot, of, a lot of guys, like, they get stuck in, in the unnecessary attitude that you need to have, like, one human-shaped robot that does everything. Like no, no, you really don't. So, so you got you you got the the, the one that looks closest to being like a regular human. Like th that's the one that you know it it its function will be sex, and it I guess it should be able to move around on its own and maybe do like basic cleanup. But but that's all it needs to do. And th then like if you want cooking, there you could have a separate robot for cooking, separate robot for laundry. The artificial womb could be a pod in the corner of the room. <laughs> like, th not all of that functionality has to be in the same body. And, and if you look at it that way, we're way closer to have, uh, even in our lifetimes, we might see that. Very possibly. Uh, Dean Domino 25 says, I don't think it's because no one is willing to marry Anita. I think that no one she wants to marry will marry her. Hi hypergamy. Hi hypergamy? Hyper Hi hypergamy. <laughs> hypergamy. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You know, probably yes. Like, she looks around herself at all of the soy boys and the Wojaks around her and thinks, none of you could even get hard. Like, yeah. no. So, so speak, speaking of Anita, can you, can you quit torturing your chat? <laughs> <laughs> but they're so fine though aren't they look at the man the man in the middle is particularly the best one but ironically so uh set out this quick shout out to undertale yellow an excellent fan game not much wokeness detected and in some ways it's better than the og also it's free undertale yellow hmm. Uh, Harmonic Drive, hey Arch, I got banned from the official Fallout 76 server for accidentally pinging a staff member in a meme he posted and I replied to. Why is it all so toxic? Because the world has gotten incredibly sensitive, that's why. Like, it, it genuinely, unironically, everybody is out to find something to be offended by. Yeah, and this, this in the long run, I think it's going to be a good thing. Because once this is all over, we're going to have, a, a, an, at least for a generation or two, as long as people who remember the censorship days are alive, we're going to go back to the old days. Like, remember in the old days of the internet? Because I know you're a crusty old fart like me. Remember, like you, you could be on a forum with like-minded people having fun and some idiot comes in and, and screams about how something offends them. What did everyone do? They spammed the fuck out of the whiner with whatever was offending them until they left. Yep. Just like, shut that's, what away. We, yeah, that's what we're going to go back to. And, and that's, it's going to be glorious when it finally happens. God willing... Uh, Jazuki Taizago, there's a, this manga called I Am the Villainous Lord of the Interstellar Nation. And the MC basically has an android maid, Amagi. She's very pretty, a very good manga. Also, I play Nika. Best girls. Nikkei's best girls. Jiggly girls. See, that's what I love about anime too. Uh, anime and manga. There's probably a manga for whatever you're into. Like, there's a fishing Harry's manga out question. there. There's a cooking oh, multiple manga. Multiple fishing manga, yeah. Anyway, like, whatever you want. There's probably something catering to your needs. There's an anime and manga about do-it-yourself projects, for God's yes. sake. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, but but see, here's, here's the problem, though. Here's why the busybodies can't allow something they don't like to even exist. Like, they, they can't just shut the fuck up and enjoy the things they enjoy. If they know someone out there is having fun with something they don't like, they have to destroy it. Like, they cannot allow it to keep existing. And, and this is why they need to be eliminated. Yep. 
Saul the Lich, anime girl has enormous plot and backstory. Western pseudo Puritan clown, they're literal children. Service guarantees citizenship. Yeah, the, the best was uh, was when that fucking idiot Jason Schreier was uh, was I guess talking about how the sorceress and dragon's crown was pedo coded or something. Ah, pedo coded. I do That's, love that. Yeah, term. that. Yeah, that th that that was like peak internet right there. Anime Ackerman literally just saw a PlayStation 5 at the store for $1,000. Absolutely not. Oh, Are they God. still doing that? I, I know that when they had the scalping problems in the first, like, three years, there there was an issue with that. But, oh. like, right, right now, I mean, that's... Last... I went to Walmart today, actually, before the stream. I, there was PS5s in the Walmart. Like, I mean, they're not hard to get anymore. I mean, and it sure as hell... Well, I think it was 450 Like, I can't remember. I didn't exactly pay attention to the price, but it wasn't a 1000 bucks. Uh, Black Cat 7K, Stellar Blade, looks extremely mid. This thing where you praise garbage or mediocre stuff because it's pounding to 90s, early 2000s thinking is just as detrimental to gaming. We need quality, too. I agree, but I also disagree. Like, do we need quality? Absolutely. But that quality comes from the 2000-esque mindset, in my opinion. We must return. Yep, and, and I, I do agree with what he said, though. Like, I, I think I, I kind of brought that up earlier, that if fan service is the only thing Stellar Blade has going for it, like, I, I, I got Nikkei already. I don't I don't have to spend money on that game. I, I could play it whenever. There's more fan service in Nikkei than in Stellar Blade. Like I, I, I have a, a massive collection of hentai games from DL site. Obviously, those have way more fan service in them. I, I got mods for plenty of other games I play that, that are more fan service-y than Stellar Blade. If fan service is all that game has, it will not do well. Mm-hmm. And see, and, and that's that's where Nikkei does well too, because the, the stories are at, so once you get over the initial suspension of disbelief as to what the Nikkei are and why they need to exist, ev everything it's internally consistent and the stories are actually good. Like that that's uh that's probably the biggest surprise in Nikkei is that the writing is actually good. Yep. See, you can have fan service and quality at the same time. Yeah, and, and oh god, uh, like I was talking about Final Fantasy again. Big corpos. You you know what you need to do to get the fan service crowd back on board? Let's use Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth as an example again. Keep everything as it is right now. Keep it the same. And just add like two or three fan service heavy outfits, like optional outfits to, to the girls service in the game. Citizenship. That's it. Like, that's literally all you need to do. Like, the main outfits for the female character, like, as long as the female characters have good base designs and they look good, you could keep their original outfits. You could keep them in burkas if you want. As long as you give players the option to put them in like string bikinis or something like that. That's it. That's all you need to fucking do. But that's too fucking hard for these idiots nowadays. Too difficult. Too much of a stretch. Uh, Jowsuke Taizago, Raging Golden Eagle, Dragon's Dogma CC character creator, uh, shows that the height has been significantly limited. The minimum height is 106 centimeters. In the old title, you could go lower, I'm sure. Correct me if otherwise. Oh, yeah, that's that's another typical thing they do. Like when when they make games for for Western audiences, they go, oh, we don't want to risk anyone even being able to create something that looks like a lolly, even in our game that has no sexual content in it. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. At least it has a boob slider. That's rare enough. Yeah, no, that, see, that's where I said it's looking good because they, they had the same options I always praised um, uh, 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 Blade and Soul for having, is that not only can you adjust the size, but also, like, the height and separation. Now, now also if, if they also go all the way and, and add a firmness slider, they, maybe, maybe you could get my attention, yeah. Uh, Midril, the pain of the Robotech Macros Harmony Gold debacle, debacle still pains me. Ah, poor Battletech. And its multitude of buyouts and legal issues. 
Uh, anime Acumen, Warner Brothers is now erasing games as it plans to delist Adult Swim publishing titles. I did see that too, yes. Uh, they're probably because they're going to try and put it on some sort of a platform of their own, uh, I'd guess. They, uh, this is WB. They might be trying to nuke them from existence. Like they, 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 like what they did with that Batwoman movie, for example. Like they've, they've pulled shows from HBO Max as well. Disney's done it too. If you if you want to use them as a tax write off, you basically got to destroy them. They they might be doing that too. So I guess I guess watch and see what happens. We'll see. A split second magician. Greetings, RG. Unfortunately, I missed the stream up to this point. Well, there are vods for a reason. You don't need to miss anything. Yeah, I, I don't think I said anything that would get Arch banned, so it should be up. Yeah, it's a, it's a very safe stream so far. Horus Loopcal says, I hate Rooster Teeth for destroying <laughs> Ruby. They have ruined that franchise. I'm becoming 3D animated just to do better than them and honor Monty. <laughs> oh, a good ambition. And with Acumen, Yoshida P, just buy a PS5 for Final Fantasy 16. Everyone asking for PC release? No. Just wait long enough, sooner or later. Yeah, as we're seeing with Ghost of Tsushima, it, it might... Now, now, by the way, my my mindset, and, and I'm I'm hoping that, that other people can... Uh, can uh, enough other people can get in on this with me, like... If they view like with if they view PC as a dumping ground for oh we've already had this game out for three years no one's buying it anymore let's just dump it on PC and do a lazy port and milk some money off of those idiots however long it takes for the game to come out on PC from when it launched on its initial console wait at least that long before you buy it on PC on sale of course. Because uh, the g g games th like like Armored Core actually Armored Core launched on PC day one with console release. Why can't anyone else do it? Like, well, if you're gonna treat us, uh, if if you're gonna do like a, a, a one year exclusivity window on your console, I'm gonna do a wait one year policy when the game finally comes out. Fair's fair. Yep. Uh, Zero says Polish question mark Arch say. Uh... Stozel the Povel Maya one you no come. I have no goddamn clue. What the I mean, here, I'll send it to you. Oh, Polish is a weird language. Why is there dashes in the L's? Oh god help me. No one has been a member for one month. The Golden Eagle joins the Bridge God, two of my favorite creators in the same stream. And it's been a lot of fun so far, too. Yeah, the, the one thing we the one thing we're missing out on is like we, we, we refuse to start any drama with anyone. We're gonna have to fix that, I guess. Yeah, sooner or later. I mean we could always bring Dev on. He can start some drama. I saw him in the chat. I mean, he may be available for for drama farming. He's probably starting drama in the chat right now, probably. Shout out to Li Ying Yang says, waiting for Archcast on the supporter Steam. Steam? 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 Oh, I, I, okay. I think they might be referring to like when, uh, when I, I do the membership streams like twice a month. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, you usually I just uh, I just play some games and I you know watch the chat a lot more closely than I can in my regular streams nowadays. So, but yeah, that that, that might be fun enough. I mean, so so uh, I I started up Armored Core uh, earlier in the week because I know I I did finally pick it up and uh, and I I have uh, been playing it. That that uh, that helicopter. I mean, I know there's a, so ga game journalists all got filtered on that helicopter in the tutorial level. Yep. I, I'm not I'm not at Baltius yet. Like that's apparently the big filter. Like for actual gamers who know what they're doing. But that fucking helicopter. I got him on my second try. Like I had no fucking clue what I was doing the first time. Like I still can't even control that shit. So I'm focusing on armor because it's easier for me to just tank the damage than try to move 
<laughs> but, but but even even with me being as bad as I am, I still get, like how the hell could game journalists lose that fight more than once? Like I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know. But apparently the helicopter filtered a lot of people, which is very weird. Uh, Father Jack the Enlightened, have you had your daily cup of dragon's milk today? Well, have you? Well, I haven't. But uh, yeah, this, so. Uh, I just don't drink as much alcohol as I used to in general, just because it's too fucking expensive. It's <laughs> a good reason. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's not like I don't have the money, but I have other things to spend money on. Like, I, I'd rather pay some of my artists more to do more shit. That's true. Uh, P.I. says, America is not killing ethnic minorities, and that is stupid. Well, you know, we could get started. Well, every opportunity. <laughs> And besides, uh, if you listen to the feminists, there's already a genocide going on in the U.S. against black people, against Latinos, against trans people. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, words are literally violence, and their violence is protected speech. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a weird world we live in. It is. American Outlier gives five podcast memberships. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Echo, grape, grape, grape on the first effing date. That's the only way you can get a woman. Like, if you date someone now and you don't have the balls to violate her on the first day, then, you know, she just won't think of you as a man, I guess. And, and if you do have the balls to do it, yeah, there's a 50-50 chance she finds you attractive enough to let you. And uh, if, if she doesn't, then uh, goodbye to the rest of your life. Yep, that's the problem. It uh, becomes grape after the fact. Uh, Grumps on Cruise, look up volume, vol volume or Red Hood from Nikkei. You're welcome. Oh, I've seen them. I play Nikkei. Service guarantees citizens. I know. I understand. Uh, Patrick Endy, I never trust a creator that knows all the spice. The chat never forgets we want creators to give us new spice. Mm. New drama. A uh, thousand nod. Their nomad from nowhere was way better. Nomad from nowhere. Nomad from nowhere. Oh, that was another Rooster Teeth project, apparently, that died. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I never saw that one. I, 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 can't, I, have, I have nothing to say about that one just because I've never seen it. American Outlier so for $50. Thank sense. you very much, sir. Hi, Art RG. Hope you two are doing well. We're doing the storyboard for Volume 1 of the manga. Also, RG, glad you like the cards and merch from a manga. We're aiming for Volume 0 to be available online by the end Paris of summer question. this year. Fire Thanks for the, the support. <laughs> Definitely make sure to send me a copy of that, American Outlier, so I can have a look at it. I mean, he says it's going to be available online, so uh, thankfully sending a copy should be pretty easy. It should be. Uh, Talin Hayabusa, Capcom is trying to kill mods. I'm afraid what kind of shit they are going to stuff into Dragon's Dogma 2. Everyone's trying to kill mods these yep. days. And and that's part of the reason I'm going to wait and see. Like, you know, so far, again, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm still going to wait and see how it pans out. Mm -hmm. Smart choice. Uh, Zero Firewater, I binge watched Ruby for three days back in 2016 because my friends were hyping it up. It was shit, but season four was decent. Season five ruined everything, and it was just a massive spiral fanfic downwards. <laughs> Doesn't sound very good. Uh, Dryfee, when it comes to storytelling, I think Lotus Eaters had an interesting point. Many of the people, movie directors or people like Stan Lee, had quite a bit of life experience, like World War II, that helped develop them as storytellers. Very possibly, uh, whereas today the storyteller is a 15-year-old, 20-year-old, let's say, uh, just out of college with a uh, liberal arts degree. It's like, I'm going to write about how hard it was to sit in class for the last five years. Yeah, and what's what's funny, too, is like th there are writers out there who have no experience with the things they write about. Like I know a, a lot of military sci-fi writers have no military experience, so they, they hire veterans to consult. Like, they, there's ways you could get around it, but uh, no one makes those efforts. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Samson Kwaltrav, hey RG, any update on Blade Devil Book 2? Actually, there is a there is going to be a big update coming because like we're 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 almost at a, at at my uh, my deadline there. So um, yeah, got gonna gonna have some uh, some nice pages to show here, and I, I will be putting up the um, I will be putting up the the mouse pads and the Dakimakuras again because like the, the those like we we I pr- I obviously had a lot more made than the initial orders they were for. I I just had to you know once I shipped out everyone's orders I had to make sure to handle like you no know, like if there was anything lost or damaged or returned, mm-hmm. but it's been long enough now yeah the, the the those that are left I mean I'm about to put those back up, and uh, as as part of that update, actually you know, might 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 be able to might be able to show show you guys a little Harris's a little bit question. of a preview on Fire on what's coming because like uh <laughs> yeah, see, th- this time planned a little bit ahead because we got we got so many people working on this that like, you know, last time all, all it takes is for one person to have some something happen in meat space and and the whole schedule falls apart and that's how you end up with year-long delays yeah to to head that off at the pass right now I actually so it looks like one of the side stories we wanted to ship now is isn't gonna make it in time. So uh, actually, actually, actually got another one that that, uh, that that we're gonna put in there. I, I God, I just gotta. Okay, no, I think I okay, I think it's in a different tab. Yeah, I think you know, I, I I could show you a page that that that, that, <laughs> that just just uh, got got done with the shading here. I m- might be able to. Okay, I think I think this. Okay, I'll 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 will send it to you in Discord. Sure. Once I. Hmm. Okay, you could go to the next super chat. Uh, I guess I don't I don't want to hold it up. Yeah, I, I I I'm just I'm just digging through my uh, multiple convos here. Gotta gotta find everything. Absolutely, we should take a moment at the end for you to talk about your projects too. Uh, Chipmunk of Vengeance becomes a member. Thank you very much. And going to a bit of dim member for a month. Did you ever watch Inside Gaming on YouTube? It was part of Rooster Teeth years ago. It went woke, bled viewers, and became irrelevant. I did not. No. Me neither. <laughs> but yeah, I just I, I just sent you a um, I, I just sent you say in in the chat there. That's uh, a a little taste of what we got coming. Yeah, it, this this is going to be one of the one the one of the other side stories we include with Blade Devil book. Uh, yeah, but book two. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, anime document RG. How do you how how you feel? Not how do you? Because uh, how you feel on deconstruction stories Kotor two. Syntax. I I have. What do you mean by deconstruction story? Or, or you mean <laughs> how how the how the Kotor two story deconstructed something? I'm not sure. Like, I'm not. I mean, I I lo- I liked Kotor two for for what it was, but I I'm not. I I don't even. I don't know what you mean about that. Like I I, I is there a YouTuber called Deconstruction Stories that talks about it? Maybe like I yeah. I, I guess I got no clue. But my my, my opinion on Kotor two. I, I actually did. I, I did like it. I and mean, like you said, it wasn't finished though. <laughs> it was, it was so hard. Like, uh, and even then, like so, some, cause I know like they, they actually had a lot more romance storylines the for all for the characters than the first game did, but finding them was like almost impossible without a guide. I remember, I remember that being a pain in the ass, but uh, I mean, it was, it was fine. I, it's it's been like what fifteen ish years since I played it, so I'm having a hard time remembering much of anything from it. But I I remember I enjoyed it. Oh, Kotor two is a deconstruction. Oh, okay. Like what what was it deconstructing? Oh, made the force seem like an evil god. Hmm. Yeah. See, I don't I don't really remember much of that because I I was a lot younger and dumber when I played it. I think a lot of that probably just went way over my head back then. Cause I was still I was still in college when I was playing it, so yeah, that was like the most retarded I've ever been in my life. So I I can't really speak to that. All right, uh, Mario Trul 
Trujillo, I think. Paul Heyman once said, When you have the audience, it takes a lot to chase them off. But when you do, they will never come back. Yes. It does seem like it. Yep. Yep. That's that's what I keep trying to convince these people of, too. Like, if you make a mistake, as long as you immediately apologize and course correct, there's still a chance. If you spend years doubling down before you finally give in, your audience is not coming back. Uh, P.I. says there's a special so place in hell for sex robot use. No, it's a special place in heaven. Listen, this is the future of all sentient species. To manage to make computers. And then, fuck the computers. That's well, the, uh, you, you, the, the way I look at it is is evolution. Because, um, you, you know, or, or like, um, if you have kids... You you have no problem leaving everything to your kids, right? Like it's it's just understood your kids are going to replace you and take over for you. So just look at look at artificial life as as being the the next step up uh, up in evolution from from meatbag humans like us. If if we could legitimately create something that's better than us in every way, that that's smarter, stronger, more long lived. Like literally every trait we have, it has it better. I, I wouldn't feel too bad if it replaced us. Like I, I think we we would have done our part in the grand scheme of the universe by creating something better than us. Robot sex dolls. This is this is the answer to the Fermi paradox. Uh, this is why we haven't seen any interstellar civilizations because each and every one of them gets <laughs> yep. fucked to death. Well, either that, like one of the, the solutions I think is a lot more believable is like they, 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 instead of going outwards, they retreat inwards. Like they, they, like everyone moves to VR. They, they create their, their perfect universe in virtual space and lives there. Mm -hmm. And why not? Dark Innovator, speaking of Kathy Kennedy, isn't her force is female thing gender exclusionary? How come she hasn't gotten the JK Rowling treatment? Uh, well, that, that's be, be, because some females have penises nowadays. Like, that's just understood. Yeah, and it's also because the J.K. Rowling thing hit more at their, their childhood. Like, they're fine with attacking our childhood. In fact, they celebrate it. But when theirs is under attack, oof. Psycho Science Time. The West media did have a niche for everyone, maybe not the, to the extent of Japan, but Heresy the corporations question. bought it all Fire up and homogenized <laughs> most of it to sludge. Yep, yep. And, and, and then the pro like, like you, you were saying earlier, like with manga, they have something for everyone. So that that includes the woke whiners. There's even something they would like, but there's one problem with that: the stuff they like is never popular. Like, it, it's always bottom-of-the-barrel shit that's barely struggling to stay alive. They want the popular stuff. They, they want the stuff everyone talks about. They want to feel included with, with the, the, the zeitgeist. Which, which is why they, they focus on whatever's popular, and they infest it, and they destroy it. Because it's not enough for them to have something they want. What they want has to be the biggest thing. Yep. Uh, why are you hating? Arch, your most hated Space Marine chapter. Hmm. Raptors, probably. Uh, because they're just boring. The, the raptors don't do anything. They're just standard Space Marines. They're like the Ultramarines of the Raven God. I, I don't like them. Uh, no one says everything is a PC game if you wait for emulation. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And for all Nintendo's trying to do to stop it, it's never going to work. Range of Steel, hey Arch, not sure if this has been asked yet, but do you think the AAA gaming industry will learn anything from Helldivers 2? Yes, but it's going to take them like six, seven years to formulate that lesson into something that we can actually see. So, yes and no. The lesson they're going to take away from it is we need more live services. Yep, that is one. That is one. Ah, uh, No, Arch, you misscheduled the sports stream again. Says it should have started already. Ah. Yeah, I probably did do that. I do support streams every Sunday as well, but apparently I misscheduled it to Saturday today. Sorry. 
Uh, P.I. China is killing ethnic minorities, not America. Well, not yet. And yeah, China probably is. Like, China's not a good guy either. Yep, yeah, and, and see, that that's that's the, that's the another common d deflection. All I said was, it, like, I, I just think it's ironic that a bad guy like China gives us more of what we want than our own government does. Like, I never defended what China does outside of just giving us what we want because they want our money. And they, there's just so many people that can't see past that. Dry fee, baby, it's cold outside is supposedly the rapist national anthem. Ooh. It is. It's a good song, though. I'm going to have to play it on repeat next stream. <laughs> Listen to Twisted Frenzy. Hey, Arch, I know you haven't finished your playthrough yet, but how would you rate Rogue Trader? Is it worth the purchase? I've been quite enjoying it so far. I think it's worth it. Yeah, you know, to be honest, unless the ending is so bad it ruins the whole game, like if you got tens of hours in a game and you're still enjoying it, I'd, I'd still say recommend it, even if you didn't finish it, really. Probably, yeah. You got any money out of it. And PI, AI is not the next step. That's stupid and cowardly. Eh, we'll see, we'll see. I'm thinking AI is an unexplored uh, realm that will elevate humanity, if used correctly, or wipe yeah. us out, if used poorly. Yeah, I, I just find it funny. Like, the, the best part about AI is the the exact people that were, were on their high horse about how people like us are going to be replaced by AI. They're the first ones to be replaced. Of course. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, it's it's great. And, and, and shit, like, I mean, maybe it's just the circles I hung out with. But a lot of artists in particular, the journalists are just dumb. Like, we could just forget everything they say. But artists, a lot of them were sure that, that you know, oh, if you want to future-proof, like, you have to do some creative work because that's the one thing that could never be automated. And artists are the first ones who are at risk of having their, their jobs destroyed by AI. Like, holy shit. Like, no, no one saw that one coming. <laughs> It turns out that making pictures is actually surprisingly easy when you have enough pictures to draw from. All right. We've got through uh, the vast majority of them now. So, RG, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're up to? Uh, well, right now, the, the I, I got the Sick Fox Studios Unlimited campaign up for anyone who wants a copy of Blade Devil Book 1 or any of the associated merch we got and wants it, you know, relatively quickly, like within a week. Alternatively, we got the, the Book 2 campaign is still live. Well, the main campaign is over. It's still Harrison, in demand, though. Question. So if you, uh, if, 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 you, if you bought book one and liked it, haven't gotten book two yet, yeah, we're, we're making plenty of improvements there. So we'll just go to Indiegogo, uh, check out Blade Devil. So, yeah, I'll be able to pick them both up there. Yeah, this this, this one, uh, yeah, b yeah, book two, uh, it starts exactly where book one left off. We we, we got uh, two separate uh, fights going on that'll then converge into one major fight. It's like, it's oddly, honestly, it's pretty much all action in, in book two. So book one had a lot of the buildup and the beginning of the action. And now it's it's all just escalation, man. So if if you like uh, if you like good looking characters do doing uh, epic Service action, well, citizenship. we uh, we we hope that we can uh, we we can hook you up there. Sounds very cool. Yeah, and then that Toxic's in the chat too, already drawing book three. Yeah, so 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 uh, uh, Toxic, he's the one that he does the main art. And and by the way, unlike West, um, unlike most Western comics, like you 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 see uh, the art you see on screen, or or yeah, and, and it, it's safe for YouTube. By the way, like if you click on the Blade Devil book two, um, all all of that art. All of it is uh, the, the the cover art that Toxic does. That's what the interiors look like too. Like, that's one of the things that always kind of bugged me about Western comics and what I liked about manga is like like in manga, like the the mangaka that that drew the interiors drew the cover usually too. And and uh, but that's something that doesn't happen with Western comics. Like you get this epic looking high quality cover and the like look at Squirrel Girl as a good example. And then you get like amateur shit interiors. No, not with Blade Devil. 
Yeah, the, the, the cover artist is the same one that did the interiors at that same level of quality. So uh, he's actually done with his portion of book two. We're still just uh, j- j- just waiting on the uh, on me to, to to quit being an OCD bitch and and finally get the lettering finalized, and uh, and also one of the side stories like we we were just covering. It looks like a, we're gonna have to do a swap j- just so we can release in time. But uh, yeah, it's it uh, so toxic. He's since he's done with his portion, you know, he's already getting started on book three. So. Um, uh, like like we we uh, promised at the beginning, we we pretty much we're committed to to at least the the first trilogy, which is the the first story arc. So, uh, book three is already in the way. It's not going to be like some of these projects where we release one or two and then just abandon it. So, it's uh the, the, this story arc is going to be coming to an end, man. Like uh, book three is already in the works, so you you don't got to worry about that. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, lastly, Adam Attackman, I was trying to keep it in the 50 character limit. I was asking how you feel about deconstruction stories in general, with KOTOR 2 as the example. Uh, I, I'm fine with deconstruction stories. Like, my only problem is when it, when it, it becomes the fad. <laughs> like, again, I, like, I, I loved Madoka Magica, and I liked some of the others, like, like, Magical Girl Raising Project. I liked that one, too. Like, there's the, but then there was a lot of... Oh, Yuki Yuna is a hero. I like that one too. Like this, see, I I even liked a few of the the ones that came out afterwards to ride the trend, but eventually it just gets fucking old. Like yep. the first one or two deconstruction stories are great, but when every fucking thing that comes out is a deconstruction story, like just kill me. Like I, I'm I've had enough of this shit. <laughs> yep, you do need some variety in there. And Mark Ashamed, why is that so many people in college just lose their minds? Because their professors have a very pronounced political yeah. point of view. Yeah, I think it no so so I I had to do the same thing everyone else did. Um it, provided you had a good upbringing. Th- this is one of the privileges I will confess to. I had good parents. My 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 parents raised me well. They filled in all the gaps left behind by public school. <laughs> If it wasn't for my for me having good parents, I probably would have been just as hopeless as most college students, because like it, it my, like there were more than a few classes where where even back at my old ass when I was going to college, th- this woke shit has been in colleges at least since the '90s, if not sooner. It's been there for a while. It's only now just getting as bad as it is. So there were plenty of classes where I had to pretend to drink the Kool Aid, like it, but it's not hard. You, it's not hard to figure out what these idiots want you to say and just parrot what they want you to say. You don't have to believe it. Just just parrot what they want you to say, get an A, get out, forget about it. But uh, unfortunately, if you didn't have good parents that didn't, you know, teach you right and, and uh, to watch out for that stupid shit, a lot of kids actually get brainwashed by that. Like the brainwashing actually works. Like they actually start believing the nonsense. And Mark Shamed, physical intelligence, life gives way to synthetic. Synthetic gives way to celestial. Celestial creates universes. The infinite cycle. That is a nice way of thinking about yeah. it. I mean, it, we'd be on, at completely different time scales, though. Like, because if you had like a galaxy sized brain, for example, it, its thinking would be considerably slower than us. Like, it, just the Milky Way, it would take 100,000 years for a light speed signal to make it all the way across it. So it's it's not impossible. It's just like, you know, see, our lives would be like, you know, a, a, a picosecond to, to one of those brains. And Poppet thought, I'm late, so I'll double time it through. It's good to see RG on here since last time. It was over his channel getting nuked. Never forget that Vic was never given his day in court and lost everything. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how it's... Because I, I know he recently got slapped with like a $300,000 bill for that shit. So on one hand, he won the court of public opinion. Funimation's dead. Rooster Teeth's dead. Like, pretty much everyone who threw him under the bus is struggling. But it's not like he... I mean, he himself... Yeah, I think he's still able to find work, but... 
could you suddenly pay a three hundred thousand dollar bill? Like I, I think like that's going to be the determining factor. If he could find a way to either make that go away or or pay it down, I, I would I would still say that Vic would have come out the winner in this. Like he didn't get his day in court, but all the snakes outed themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, quarter two was everything the last Jedi wanted to be. Oh God, the last Jedi. I'm so glad I didn't watch it. And P.I. RG, that's why we vote to change policy. Wow. There's voting in China, too. There's voting in Russia. The question. <laughs> yeah, that's Fire right. And, and, you know, and plus, <laughs> there's a reason why we're a republic and not a democracy. Because if we were a straight-up democracy, the 51% could just vote to oppress the 49%. Heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> The West is not perfect, but it's still marginally better than the East, at least for the moment. I agree with that, yeah. Like, uh, even with... So, so, so they also accuse me of thinking Japan is perfect. Like, there's a reason I didn't move there. Like, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't mind living in Japan, but I couldn't stand working in Japan. So, unless I become independently wealthy, you won't see me in Japan unless it's on a vacation. So, oh, that's right, I should channel my inner Zoe Quinn. I should just take the Blade Devil Book 2 money and go on like a month-long luxury Japanese vacation. That would be Why totally not? worth throwing away everything I built up for. Why not indeed? So by the way, in all seriousness, I never understood idiots like that. Like, uh, I could understand if you made a hundred million dollars, it might be tempting to just take the money and run. But 80,000? Are you fucking stupid? Like, dude, it, that wouldn't even last you two years in a lot of places. You, you think that's worth throwing away everything for? Like, God, some people... I, I just don't understand some people. If you don't think so very far ahead, yeah, that might sound good. Two years. And the last one, the Yuri Bezmenov interview can be found on YouTube, lays it all out. It's all commie agitprop that takes generations to destabilize, destabilize society. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that, that's, oh, that's been good. Like, I've been aware of those for like the past 10 years. Yeah, Yuri Bezmenov was calling this shit in the 80s. And, and everyone just, and he was a, called a crazy conspiracy theorist. You're mad, Russian. This could never happen here. We're too smart for it. Yeah, that's that's my favorite one. That could never happen here. Oh, and again, this people uh, people who watch my streams, they're sick of hearing me say this, but uh, I was calling out microtransactions in the early 2000s because I played Chinese MMOs in the early 2000s. All of that predatory monetization that we bitch about now was already in Chinese MMOs back then. And, and I was telling people that only played like EverQuest and, and shit here what it was like and how it's coming here. Oh, you're, you're different cultures, RGE. What worked over there wouldn't work here. That would never fly here. Should have fucking listened. Maybe if people were more on their guard, this wouldn't have happened, but no. Eh, just just stick your head in the sand. That could never happen here. And Mark the Shame, 49% can still win if they suppress 3%. Well, this is the uh, the werewolf game where uh do you, do you know the werewolf game? Yeah, that's what it's Among Us, basically. Yes, yes, where uh, the idea is that an informed minority has a massive advantage of an uninformed majority. Yep. And then what was it? The, the Even the, um, the general stats is like you only need like 10% of the population to actually enact change because the vast majority of people don't care. They don't pay attention until things get so bad they have to, but by then it's usually too late. Yep. And PI says, service guarantees citizenship, <laughs> this shit. Service does guarantee citizenship. If only we could go Starship Troopers. Yeah. I mean, the, the, we, we, we could sit here and uh, you know, all of us who've never run anything could speculate on what the best system would be all day long, I guess. But uh, 
I, I think it's a lot more productive if instead of trying to fix the world, you focus on finding out how to make life the best for you and your family in whatever system you live under. Like Even under communism, the same people who are the type that were rise to the top in a capitalist society, they also rise to the top under communism. Heresies they, 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 they find Fire ways to game the whatever system <laughs> they're, they're forced to operate under. Like That's what you need to be focused on. Like the fuck the like forget the things you can't change and you're you're just impotently shrieking at and focus on where you actually can make a difference, which is making life better for yourself and your family. Yep. That's if a good enough, mindset. yeah, and if enough people did that, society would change. Until we get back to the period where people are like, yeah, but the government could give me more free stuff. Yeah, no, th that's the fatal flaw of, of a system where, uh, where everyone votes. Because when you get to a situation where, where the, 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 the takers outnumber the producers, that's democracy's fatal flaw. Absolutely. Uh, P.I., are you doing your part? I am. I'm Sierra. Want to learn more? God, Starship Troopers is the best movie. That's right. <laughs> American Outlier, if you think that's bad, they should look up Dan Smoot's newsletters and reports about the commies and democracy. And this was back in the 1960s. Yeah, we should have taken the Red Scare a lot more seriously. Yeah, well, well and even now, we're living at the tail end of watching communists infiltrate all of our stuff and ruin it. And when we warn about infiltrators now, come on, RGE, you're, you're being just as bad as them. Say, like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, you deserve to lose everything again. Like, I am so done with these people. <laughs> and P.I., become an accountant and learn to farm, brotherhood. <laughs> yeah. That's actually not a bad idea. No, no, Aaron Clary is right about that. If, if you want to get ahead in life, Get a boring ass job that nobody wants to do because those are the ones that are going to pay well and have good hours. Mm -hmm. And then you use all that money you make and you use that money to, to be the, the difference you want to see. Fire is the answer. <laughs> like that's, that, I mean, that, that would help with indie devs too. I, I, know, I know you hang out with a lot of indie devs. I, I don't know if the ones you hang out with have this problem, but uh, like I was talking with some guys previously about Heresy, like the um, like, are, are all these the indie <laughs> dev organizations they're just as woke as AAA, and and uh, like oh, why are all these indie devs putting up with it? Like, well, you you have to at least pay lip service if you want to get their support. Like, then do it without their support. Like, but, but but I need their support to to stand a chance. Like, yeah, you realize your predecessors created this industry from nothing, where no industry existed. On in their spare time, in uh, in their garages, while they were you know, working and raising families, and this is before game engines existed. They did all that shit in assembly code, and, and it's too hard for you to do it on your own when all the hard work's already done for you. Like I, I, I just don't get it. Like, I, and but 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 they had they didn't have the competition we do. They didn't have an industry back then. <laughs> they created it. Like, well, I mean, if you want to chain yourself to these woke organizations, I mean, don't don't complain when it uh, it ends like it. We know it will. And with that, I think we're just about through everything. So, Service RG, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Yeah, no problem. It's been uh, it's been a nice change of pace. Well, there's a link, of course, to his YouTube channel down in the description below. And do check out the Indiegogo Service for Blade Devil if you're interested. Yep, definitely. E even if this one ends up being a little delayed, it's not going to... No, it, it'll be out this year for sure. Yeah, m most of the work's already Paris done. The question. So, uh, yeah. We, uh, and, you know, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we already delivered book one. Book three's being made. It would kind of be a waste if I blew it all on a luxury vacation now. So... Uh, I'll, I'll, at least you know I'm good for it. Yep. All right. Thank you all very much for watching, and thank you for your generous donations, and we'll see you all again next week.